Thank you for attending our online committee hearing. So it's public hearing of the Committee on Trade, Commerce, and Entrepreneurship, joint with the Committee on Health and Demography, Ways and Means, uh, Urban Planning, Housing and Resettlement, and Finance. And uh, what committee on government is this jingle? Is this local government or government reorganization? Local government. Sir. Local joint with local government. Uh, this public hearing is hereby called to order. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Dito Lapid, one of the, uh, the the author of one of the bills we will consider, and Senator Marcos is here. Uh, yeah, Senator Marcos is now present. Also, the author of, I think, one or two bills we we will consider uh, this morning. Yes, so thank, uh, thank you. you. Thank you, Senators Lapid and Marcos, for joining me. So we definitely have a quorum for today's hearing. Uh, so now our committee secretary, Ms. Jingle Alam, will now acknowledge our resource per persons. Magandang umaga po, sir. Magandang umaga po, Senator Marcos and Senator Lapid. And I think Senator Migster, darating din po, and Senator Gachalian. For today's hearing, we have uh, a number of guests and resource persons from different agencies. From the Department of Trade and Industry, we have Engineer Mario Gaudiano, Ms. Susan May Salonga, Assistant Secretary Noel Patrick Prudente, and Executive Director no Doris Gacho, Assistant Secretary Defna Du Naga, Assistant Secretary Joan Karen Riola. We also have President Jose Capistrano and also Assistant Director Marie Camille Castillo. From the Department of Health, we have Dr. Maria Rosario. Sylvia Uy, Ms. Jovita Raval, Dr. Ana Melisa Guerrero, Ms. Vanessa Zaulog, and Ms. Joyce Pairena. We also have Engineer Ana Trinidad Rivera and Director Marilyn Pagayunan. We also have Dr. Melanie Santillan. From the Department of Finance, we have Attorney Karen Ann Yambao. From the Department of Finance, under the Sec Securities and Exchange Commission, we have Commissioner J.D. Paul Francisco, Attorney Darwin Soto, and Attorney Algin Lacanaria. From the Department of Budget and Management, we have Michelle Magdian and Attorney Trisha Batman. We have Ms. Ellen Joyce. From the Department of Transportation, we have Assistant Secretary Edgar Galvante. From the Department of Human Settlements and Urban, Urban Development, we have Assistant Secretary Avelino Tolentino. From the Association of Carriers, Equipment, Lessors Incorporated, we have Mr. J. Ladio Angeles. From the Imagine Look, we have Attorney Mary Grace Do Santo Domingo. From the Philippine Society of Nutrition Nutritionists Dietitians, we have Mr. Jake Van Don Andal. We also have from the Department of Agriculture, we will have uh, Yusek Evelyn Lavinia, Under Secretary Ernesto Gonzalez, uh, Assistant Secretary Christine Evangelista, Assistant Secretary Bassett, and Assistant Secretary Noel Padre. That's for all now, sir. Thank you, Pop. Thank you, Comsec. Uh, just let me announce some house rules, no? Uh, for an orderly and smooth running of the hearing. Let us uh, mute, mute our microphones, no? Unless. Uh, 
you are recognized or if you want to be recognized since i cannot really see all of you at all at the same time feel free to call my attention no? by stating your name that you want to say something and given the uh varied and diverse uh, subject matters that we are going to tackle this morning i am sure that not all of you are here for all or many of the subject matters maybe you're you're here for one subject matter so as soon as uh, you're finished with your business before the committee just uh, quietly uh, but uh, formally inform our committee secretary uh, ma'am jingle do they know your contact number jingle or just inform her that you are uh, leaving or about to leave the meeting because your business is done and uh, uh, this early, accept my thanks na, uh, to all of you. Uh, my thanks for attending this uh, committee hearing and helping us uh, understand the very different and uh, wide-ranging uh, subject matters that we are going to tackle uh, this morning. Iba, ganyan po talaga. That's the, I think this is the trademark and what is interesting about the Trade Committee, um, Mamaymi, uh, very interesting. Uh, the, never a boring day in the Trade Committee because of the subject matters that are under the jurisdiction of this committee. Dami, <laughs> iba-iba. Mamaya, papasok pa tayo ng labor law. <laughs> Everything under the sun. <laughs> Everything under the sun. As long as you... you buy or sell and you, or you exchange anything i think that's under this committee <laughs> okay so ganito na lang now so we we have uh, listed down the following bills that we are going to hear today i will mention them in no particular order so we have the bpa in child care articles prohibition act by senator binay the trans fat free philippines act by senator binay Trans Fat Free Philippines Act by Senator Pangilinan, Drugs and Medicine Price Regulatory Board by Senator Subiri, Drugs and Medicine Price Regulatory Board by Senator Marcos, Employers Liability Protection from COVID-19 by Senator Revilla. Akala ko kay Senator Soto ito. Senator Revilla pala ito. Rental Payment and Eviction Moratorium During Disasters and Emergencies Act by Senator Revilla, Warehouse Receipts Act of 2019 by Senator Pangilinan, Heavy Equipment Registration Act by Senator Revilla, Auto uh, Philippines Act of 2020 by Senator Revilla. Okay, mukhang nagkamali. Mali, mali. Yung... Sorry, sir. Uh, yes. Mali, mali, mali yung master list. Yung uh, Employers Liability Protection from COVID-19 Act is Senator Soto. Yes, SP Soto. Soto. Rental Payment and Eviction Moratorium During Disasters and Emergencies Act, Act is by Senator Lapid. Okay. Yes, Tama. Okay, so then we, let's start now with the bill filed by Senator Lapid because he is, uh, I think he's still here with us. Is Senator Lapid is still online. Uh, uh, Comsec, com com do you see some flashing on the screen? Like a flash by yung some images? Sa, sa screen ko natin flash ang iba eh. Ha? Hindi na You're okay? Sir. You're okay? Oh, okay po. Maybe something is wrong with my uh, connection. Uh, in, in case of the worst case scenario that I get cut off, uh, Senator Aimee, be prepared uh, to take over. <laughs> then I will, I will try my best to, 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 to log in again. <laughs> Okay, so we will start. We will start now with Senate Bill Number One Five Two Five, the Rental Payment and Eviction Moratorium During Disasters and Emergencies Act, filed by Senator Lapid. So, Senator Lapid, uh, if you want to make an opening statement, the floor is yours, sir. Alam niyo salamat po. Magandang umaga po sa committee chairman Coco Pimentel at ang aking mga kapwa senador at mga resource person. Uh, nagpapasalamat po ako at natalakay itong Senate Bill na 1525 na meron po akong opening statement pero isusumiti ko na lang po at i-insert po sa record. Uh, maraming salamat uh, Mr. Chairman at natalakay po itong Senate Bill ko na 1525 dahil kasi ito po ay 
na ayon at uh, kailangan ng ating mga kababayan dahil po itong uh, pag uh, ganitong pandemya lalong-lalo na po pag may state of calamity eh yan po eh, siguro uh, ano yun natin dahil sa pagrenta at monitorium ng pagrenta ng ating mga kababayan ng nangungupahan at uh, pagdating ng uh, state of calamity yung pong mga probinsya city at ang mga munisipyo eh pag nag-deklara uh, po ng state of calamity sila na po mag-uusap pag kung kailan magbabayaran pero kailangan po talaga bibigyan ng kaluwagan na hindi sila mahirapan sa pagbabayad at hangga't merong state of calamity ang isang probinsya, isang uh, city o munisipyo. Yun lang po at uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa inyo. Sir Chair. Thank you Senator Lapid at saka Siguro klaruhin natin na hindi lang ito COVID ano uh, kasi ang 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 topic na ito kung maging batas ito covered lahat ng disasters and emergencies. So pangmatagal pangmatagalan po ito. So do we have any comments from uh, DTI? Did you did you send somebody to comment on this one and then is, is, we're talking about SB1525 and also sino pong nagpadala ng ano ha we have from the housing uh, department of human settlements and urban planning and urban development uh, philippine retailers association oh okay just raise your hand call my attention if there are any comments Yes, sir. Nagpa-flash kayo, sir. So, is this housing? Identify yourself, sir. Good morning, uh, Mr. Oh. Chair. This yes, is sir. Valentino. Okay. I am joined by Attorney Aguila of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Senator Pimentel, Honorable Senators Marcos and Lapid. Uh, on behalf of Secretary De Lusario and the officers of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, we welcome this opportunity to provide inputs to SB 1525 or the Rental Payment and Eviction Moratorium during Disasters and Emergencies Act sponsored by the Honorable Senator Lapi. We support SB 1525 and its objective of protecting the disadvantaged sectors from further hardships by imposing a rental payment slash eviction moratorium during disasters and emergencies. Mr. Chair, uh, in fact, uh, during the ECQ, Pursuant to RA 11469, the Bayanihan to Ilas 1 Act, the department issued DO number 2020-04, which, um, which provides a grace period uh, for those who have incurred uh, mortgages. And similarly, uh, the Pag-ibig Fund to their circular numbers uh, 433 and 438, Mr. Chair, also provided guidelines for the grant on uh, 60 days grace period and 30 day grace period on loans affected by the ECQ, Mr. Chair. So we, we actually welcome this effort by the Honorable Senator Lapid to institutionalize uh, these protective measures for our uh, fellow men, not only during the time of pandemic, but uh, institutionally uh, in any, in any uh, nationally or locally declared uh, disaster and or emergency. So we appreciate that effort. Uh, Mr. Chair, however, we would like to uh, uh, to further uh, comment and be, be part of the PWG because um, maybe, uh, Mr. Chair, in addition to just covering the rental uh, moratorium, maybe we could also consider the possibility of including loan, morato loan payment moratoriums during uh, emergencies and disasters. Uh, furthermore, we'd also like to uh, discuss with uh, your legislative staff if it's possible, Mr. Chair, to set uh, the coverage of the, uh, of the moratorium. Uh, for the information of the body, Mr. Chair, um, the DHSUD also uh, performs the, uh, the functions under the Rent Control Act. And under the Rent Control Act, we only provide uh, protection to certain levels of rent. Uh, in this case, yung mga rents lang, Mr. Chair, up to 10,000 pesos. So meaning to say, 
if the rents are are expensive, if we're looking at rents ranging from you know ten thousand up, mga fifty thousand or hundred thousand pesos, we no longer provide the uh, rental relief. So in this case, uh, baka we might be looking at the moratorium, but we we might uh, we might need to focus it so that consistent with the explanatory note, we can focus on providing. Uh, uh, protection for the for our blue collar workers and for our da daily wage earners, Mr. Chair. But uh, I think those are best discussed during the TWG. Mr. Chair, we submit uh, Honorable Senators Marcos and uh, Lapid. Thank you. Uh, and also present with us are Senators uh, Winga Chalian and Mig Subiri. So who 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 spoke? Asec Tolentino. Was that you, Mr. Chair? Asik Tolentino, DHSUD, Mr. Chair. Uh, Asik what is the status of the rent control law? Validity up to up to when? Mr. Chair, um, we issued uh, an extension so that it's valid until uh, 2021, Mr. Chair. By department order? By department order, Mr. Chair. Uh, has that power been delegated to you? Kasi alam ko, by law, by law yan and extend doon eh. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, uh, under the Rent Control Act, uh, Section 6 of the Rent Control Act says uh, authority to, to continue rental regulation and it's given to the HUDCC, the precursor agency of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, Mr. Chair. Okay, very good. So that's good news to all of those uh, covered by the Rent Control Act. And <clears throat> your suggestion is we, when we uh, when we finalize the committee report on SB one five twenty five, to also take that into consideration. Maybe the spirit behind that law. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. Pwede rin bang ano? Pwede rin bang it take into account the namin yung Tolentino bill on the three gives. Have you heard of that? Uh, In Mr. Chair, I will, uh, Mr. Chair, I will defer to our attorney, Angelito Aguila. Uh, just in case you have heard of that, uh, okay lang ba yun? I will, anyway, at any rate, I will instruct the uh, my staff to also consider this uh, in relation to SB 1525. Uh, ano ang sabi ni attorney? Yes, uh, yes, we can. We can, we can echo. What's happening, Jingle? I cannot hear uh, attorney. Sir, on the end, for you, my problem, sir. According because I can see some flashing on my screen, baka may problema din ako saan. Okay, so... Uh, housing, we, housing, we cannot hear you, or uh, even if uh, we can hear your audio stream, it's uh, feedback and echo. So, anyway, please submit position papers, all of those interested in this uh, topic. So, any other any other ideas or comments? Senwin, moratorium ito, moratorium on rental payments and ano, and uh, evictions during uh, emergencies and calamities. So, okay, so I think we should now uh, approve this for uh, submission to the plenary after uh, a technical working group session. If there is no objection, kasi ano naman ito, hindi lang ito COVID-19 specific, applicable to all kinds of uh, calamities and emergencies. Okay, so thank you very much. We move on to the next topic. Thank you, thank Mr. You. Chair. Thank you, Senlito. Thank you. Uh, is Senator Subiri requesting the TV next or okay lang? We, we proceed. Next, mga 10.30 pa daw. Oh, yata, ah, si oh, what is the bill of, what is the bill of uh, Senator Marcos? So we can tackle. Ah. 
So similar po kay Senator Zubiri yung kay Ma'am Marcos po. Uh, same. Uh, same yeah. But Amy is already here. Eh, so, and then, tama-tama, we can start now, we can start discussion on the Drugs and Medicines Price Regulatory Board that Senator Mig will deliver his statement when he arrives. Okay, one of the authors is here, Senator Marcos, in case, uh, ma'am, you want to uh, say something about about your bill. Can she hear us, Jingle? Senator Aini? Hello, ma'am. Okay. Uh, okay, so in that case, we will just proceed uh, in the order that I have. Uh, 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 yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Padilla, yes. Yes, good morning, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is uh, Chidoro Padilla. I'm the Executive Director of the Pharmaceutical and Healthcare Association of the Philippines. Mm. And uh, if. By your permission, Mr. Chair, if, uh, we could uh, read our a statement on, on behalf of the industry. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, just observe some time limit, sir. Huh? So, yes. Of course, of course. Thank you. Self-regulation. Self uh, go ahead, sir. <laughs> Thank you so much. So good morning, uh, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. We thank you for the opportunity to be invited to give our position on Senate Bill numbers 309 and 1760. The Pharmaceutical and Healthcare Association of the Philippines, or PHAP, recognizes the noble intentions of the proposed measure to make healthcare more affordable. We at PHAP are committed to working with you to improve access to medicines through more sustainable approaches in this time of the pandemic. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the need for measures that will ensure uninterrupted supply of medicines in the country. At the start of this pandemic, our industry dedicated its best scientists and leveraged on new technologies to fast track the development of safe and effective COVID-19 treatments and vaccines. Due to constant reinvestments into research and development, COVID-19 vaccines have been discovered less than a year since the global declaration of the pandemic. Two PHAP members have also applied for and have received emergency use authorization to make COVID-19 vaccines available to Filipinos at no profit to help contain it, the pandemic. While working on our research pipeline, we have made tremendous efforts to ensure medicine supply risks are also mitigated. Also acting as your frontline, frontliners, our manufacturing facilities and offices have worked overtime and sought alternative sources of products and logistics arrangements, despite the strict movement of goods and medicines globally. We charted flights, which are at least 10 times our regular transportation costs to bring needed medicines to the country. And we have also become part of the DOH Pharmaceutical Security Group to respond to urgent medicine requests. Like many Philippine industries, we are not immune, we are not gaining, and we have not recovered from the pandemic. Patients have not returned to hospitals due to widespread fears of contracting COVID-19 when they go to health facilities. This has led to the steep decline in prescribing medicines after diagnosis or for maintenance. The double-digit contraction of the pharmaceutical market, which is reaching up to negative 18%, is evidence of our struggles. With this, we earnestly ask for your help so that we too may recover. In the midst of the lockdowns in June 2020, our members were hit with mandatory price reductions despite our appeal. We are already seeing its negative effect, compounded by the impact of the pandemic. For example, some companies have withdrawn certain medicines from the Philippine market, and we have respectfully urged the Department of Health to conduct an impact assessment of this policy. With this, we respectfully ask for a timeout on mandatory price reductions as it is our sincere desire to first focus on our collective goal of containing the pandemic. The creation of the Drug Price Regulatory Board makes drug price regulation the primary instrument of the state for improving the affordability of drugs. 
contrary to the effective competition policy of Republic Act 9502. As a matter of sound economic policy, the imposition of price control is retrogressive. The introduction of a price control regime on the pharmaceutical industry, especially at this time of the pandemic, may discourage investments and become a barrier to medicine access. More importantly, the use of price controls can be counterproductive, discouraging existing and future investors. Our members continue to rely on a predictable business environment to invest in the country that leads to jump-starting the economy at a time when all sectors need to be boosted. We also note that broad consultations from the different stakeholders are already in place through the Drug Pricing Advisory Council under the Department of Health. Therefore, we respectfully believe that there is no need to introduce another layer of bureaucracy when such a consultative body composed of exactly the same expert stakeholders identified in the bills already exists. There are more sustainable ways of reducing medicine prices in the country. Many of our honorable senators today, who are present today, are also authors of the Universal Health Care Act and the National Integrated Cancer Control Act. We respectfully appeal that we facilitate the provisions and tools under these laws that offer more viable and effective ways to reduce medicine prices. We appeal that we employ pooled procurement and price negotiation instead of mandatory price impositions. In countries where the Philippines is being compared to, medicine prices in these countries are low because they have a single payer system in place. Both the UHC and the Cancer Control Act have provisions that give the government leverage in driving medicine prices down. These are our preliminary comments on the bills, and we will be submitting our official position on the matter. Again, we thank you, Mr. Chair, for your kind consideration. We look forward to closely working and collaborating with you as we navigate our way together out of this pandemic. Thank you very much, and good morning. Thank you, Mr. Padilla. You mentioned single payer. What is that for my, uh, for my education? Single yeah. payer system. Yes, Mr. Chair, in, in countries uh, where you have, uh, for example, in uh, places like Thailand, uh, there is actually the government that uh, procures uh, on behalf of the population and negotiates uh, for, for, for everybody. And that's exactly why uh, the, 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 the volumes that they put together, the negotiation strategies, that this, this help actually drive the medicine prices down because there is a commitment to volume. And a in uh, a negotiated Canada. price. Canada is Canada oh, well, an example. Canada is also another example, Mr. Chair. No. Um, so, what is the basic economic principle behind this? The economies of scale. Uh, yes, that's part of partly, Mr. Chair. Do you have economies of scale? So you have uh, volumes uh, that are decided and agreed upon, and then you also uh, put that on the table when you when the single payer which is the government negotiates with the industry so yeah i apply i apply ko sa current ano, sa current plan for the vaccine so when local governments even each local government is empowered to buy its own uh vaccine from different dealers the national government does the same thing the different national agencies do the same thing is that uh is that uh, contrary now to the principle being uh, being pursued by the single payer system, which has which which has proven to be one way of lowering down the cost of the item being purchased? What uh, what is your comment, uh, Doctor Padilla? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Although I'm not a doctor, no, I'm a director, <laughs> sir. Uh, yeah. Yes. So actually, uh, there is a um, in in this in in the current situation, of course, uh, COVID. You you uh, ideally there should be one uh, group or one body that is um, discussing with the industry. Now, on the part of the individual companies, uh, they've already signified that they uh, are prepared to to offer the products at no cost. No, uh, at sorry, at not at no cost, at no at the no profit scheme particularly because this is an unusual circumstance, no? the, the pandemic. So, the, but the, the, the creation of the, what we call the drug price board is actually going to be beyond or just not just on COVID-19. COVID I think that's a separate matter altogether, Mr. Chair. 
Yes, thank you. But the principle could have been applied. Pero eh, siguro, because of, of the emergency, uh, the difficult situation, there's uh, some so, some kind of desperation and emergency. Uh, anyway, yes. anyway, I think Senator Marcos is now with us. Ah uh, yes, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, Mike, just... you're, you're one of the you're you're the author of one of the bills on the drug That's and medicine correct. price. If you have a statement, ma'am. Yes, thank you very much. I just wanted to highlight uh, certain distinctions between my bill and uh, Senator Subiri. Uh, may dinagdag po ako na dapat mandated a minimum of 15% generic kasi alam natin pinapalusutan tayo ng uh, iba't ibang uh, mga LGU, ng DOH, eh, dapat generic sana, may 15% man lamang. I also increased the minimum fine to 200,000 from 50,000 na alam naman natin pinagtatawan lang ng Big Pharma. Also, um, uh, dinagdag ko that uh, the, regular, the regulatory board should uh, have the power to require the production of books, records, documents, bills of land, of lading, uh, accounts, etc. Uh, para makonclude kung ano talaga yung tamang presyo, kasi pag diniklara nila yun na yun, wala na tayong basehan o ebidensya para kalkalin na tama yung profit margins. I also ask that the Secretariat be uh, established to assist the board. And finally, there is a trust fund of 500 million pesos. Medyo suntok sa buwan to, but uh, this is an advocacy that we've maintained for a long time. And together with the Senate uh, President Pro Tempore Recto, during train one, naisingit po natin uh, yung uh, pagtatanggal ng VAT sa iba't ibang gamot sa 2025, including the advocacy also of our own chairman, uh, Coco Pimentel, na idagdag yung uh, in addition to the comorbidities of diabetes, hypertension, cholesterol, dinagdag rin natin yung mental illness. E tamang-tama pre-COVID yun. E ngayon na COVID, ang taas-taas ng suicide rates, depression rates, swak na swak po. So this is an ongoing advocacy to bring down what are some of the highest uh, prices in medicines here in our region. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Padilla mentioned about the present system and then the, that you that the industry is already happy with the present system. So the filing of the bills showed that some people are not happy with the present system. Ano? So can the, can the DOH tell us what the present system is all about uh, so we can see what the weaknesses of the present system, uh, what we are trying to remedy? See, who in the DOH, please? Good morning, Mr. Chair. I'm Dr. Melissa Guerrero from the Department of Health representing the Pharmaceutical Division. So we are currently acting as the Implementing Office of Republic Act Number no. 9502, which is being amended uh, through these bills. Uh, let me just highlight for the position paper that we submitted. I'm not going to read the entire paper, but some amendments that we wish to see in the RA 9502 uh, we agree, we fully support that there is a dedicated price regulatory board. Uh, right now, how, how we are doing it is the Secretary of Health constitutes a, an expert committee. So there's a drug price advisory committee, but they don't have much authority. So the authority still rests with the president uh, by virtue of the Republic Act 9502. So it is only through an executive order that prices of medicines can be regulated in this country. I agree with uh, Mr. Ted Padilla that there are various measures that uh, can be done by the government, but uh, regulation is not, uh, if we do pull procurement or price, negoti price negotiation for drugs that we procure in the government or we subsidize in the government, that doesn't mean we can do price regu regulation. For example, in Canada, which was mentioned by Mr. Ted Padilla, there is a board, so that's the uh, Patented pri Medicines Price Review Board, uh, which uh, regulates all patented medicines upon uh, entry into the Canadian market. But that also uh, doesn't... Um, that, uh, uh, the Canadian government also pays for uh, medicines that are 
uh, through the government uh, insurance system. So it doesn't mean that we do price negotiation or pool procurement, then we cannot do price regulation. Some All countries have some form of price regulation. What we're seeking is just a, a dedicated body, regardless of political climate, who can really uh, focus on regulating prices because what we see now, so we are we have passed the executive order 104 adding to the initial list of five drugs that were uh, whose prices were controlled uh, during the time of Senate of President Gloria Macapag Arroyo. But over the years, we have seen some prices of drugs uh, which really have exorbitant uh, prices. For example, po yung mga cancer medicines that you see now. So a lot of the senators also uh, refer patients to the Department of Health. But even with the Medicines Access Program or, or the MAIP, some of them we cannot really subsidize. So these are the things that we really need to put uh, regulation on. We we don't we don't intend to really uh, kill the industry with this bill. It is just stemming the the increase in prices. And uh, we have worked with the industry. They have been transparent in the executive order one hundred four, and we we will still work with them uh, with the drug price regulatory board hoping that there can really be a balance between the pricing and access. So some of the things that we wish to see in the amendment are the following. So apart from the creation of the price regulatory board, uh, which should have quasi-judicial powers because right now we don't have that, is uh, to work in coordination with the Philippine Competition Commission so that anti-competitive behavior such as entry barriers of generic or interbrand competition and restriction in the distribution channels and consumer cho choices are addressed. On the maximum retail prices, uh, there should be a mandatory price reduction of innovator pharmaceutical products upon first entry of its generic counterpart because what we see even after patent expiry, some medicines still continue to increase in prices even though they have uh, the, the patents have expired. We also want to propose that the allowable price increases uh, of the medicines should not exceed national inflation rates or the consumer price index. Also, uh, once a drug is under the maximum drug retail price, we propose that they, don't, they are not subjected anymore to the special discounts such as the senior citizens discount and the uh, PW discounts. So because the discounts have really distorted uh, the pricing of medicines for all consumers. Uh, for price, price transparency, we are just espousing what was supported by all member states in the signing of a recent World Health Assembly resolution on price transparency, that prices of drugs should really be made transparent by governments. So we would want to require pharmaceutical companies to submit price data at the registration level, so at the point of registration of the FDA, so that we don't have a hard time collecting price information from everywhere. Um, yes, if I did, yes. yes. That's the question that I had. Na under my section three, meron ganon. You can actually get the price data for the documentation instead it's not, of just being burdened. It's not really. Price. It's not really easy, Madam Senator. That's why we're proposing at the registration level it be made available to the government. Okay, Doctor Guerrero. Yes, Madam Senator. Senator. Senator Marcos will ask a question uh, to Dr. Guerrero, and then our majority leader is already here. We'll give him Ay, okay, okay. time for his, uh, his statement. Yes. Quick question lang, no? Itatanong ko lang, yung provision ng parallel importation, ano sa tingin ninyo yun? Uh, there's some controversy and confusion in the interpretation of whether our WTO obligations, particular yung, yung TRIPS agreement, allow said parallel importation pero palagay ko kinakailangan na yon um, especially from india as uh, we know it's the major manufacturer of the world so uh, what are your thoughts we've not had very good experiences with parallel importation through dti uh, ano sa tingin ninyo parallel importation of generic drugs will that help us or will that confuse the issue uh, those provisions, the TRIPS flexibilities are already ingrained in the law. So they are the right, especially of developing countries, to have access to even the patented drugs. I think 
PITC Pharma is here because we have experience before during the time of uh, Secretary Romualdez when we did parallel importation of one antihypertensive drug. That was the only that was the only instance. Perhaps the PITC Pharma can. Yes. Attempted from India. Yes, Madam Senator, I'm confirming that it was under the leadership of then Senator Marojas. Yeah. Can I can I call po P PITC Pharma to share that experience of um, parallel importation? Yes. Um, uh, Ma'am, ma can you explain first the concept? What is parallel in, uh, importation? Uh, that means importing from another country like India a similar branded drug. So it's brand to brand. Uh, to gain lower priced medicines, to gain access to lower priced medicines. But that is that is an authorized brand also. You you're buying yes. India authorized din yon. So, yes. Walang walang fake na ano dito an, or unauthorized or misbranded uh, yes. items being imported. Okay. No, sir. It's brand to brand. Bypass the uh, profit margins of the uh, importers, the traders, and the agents. It's a uh, direct uh, importation from one country to the other. So, Govern dapat magmura talaga yung presyo. Government, lang, government, ma'am. Nagkaka problema. Government does the importation. That's why PITC. That's right. Yes, sir. Uh, direct. Oh. Uh, Okay, so so uh, so we will we will call the PITC Parma after we hear from the majority leader because okay, that, thank you. I, I'd like to apologize to the majority leader. I was told to call this ten thirty, sir. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry na. <laughs> my speaking, no, no. My, my apologies. I'm the one late, uh, Senator Coco. I'm the one late. I'm sorry. I just had an interview with the uh, uh, DWIZ. We know how busy you are. So this is one of your uh, this is your bill, sir. So uh, take it away. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, my dear chairman and kababayan from Cagayan de Oro. First of all, good morning to our dear chairperson, Senator uh, Coco Pimentel, uh, our senator from the, Il uh, the Republic of Ilocandia, Senator Ivy Marcos, and of course, Senator Winga Chalian, and to the stakeholders that are here from the DOH, uh, from the other government agencies listening in. Even my good friend, uh, Ted Padilla, is here with us. We are both now uh, a white hair. We're now both sharing the white hair look. <laughs> but mine is the COVID look because that's what happens when you get COVID. But um, if I'm allowed, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll just give a short opening statement, one page. Um, once again, good morning. I filed Senate Bill number 309, which seeks to amend the Quality Affordable Medicines Act, which will create the Drug Price Regulatory Board to reduce the prices of drugs in the country. The creation of this agency was in my proposal when I first filed the bill, which later on became Republic Act. 9502 or the Quality Affordable Medicines Act. Pero nawala po ito sa final version, unfortunately. Our direct experiences show how medicines are generally out of reach of ordinary citizens. Nung ako po ay naging chairperson ng Committee in Trade and Commerce, nagkaroon po kami ng hearing ng Joint Congressional Oversight Committee on Quality Affordable Medicines at lumabas po ang ating sa ating hearing na ang Pilipinas ay isa pa rin sa mga may pinakamahal na gamot sa buong mundo. I, we live in extraordinary times at ngayon uh, nga pong pandemya ay dami pong nawala ng trabaho sa ating mga kababayan. Some of our kababayans actually forego checkups and hospital visits dahil natatakot nga sila na matamaan ng COVID. And not only because of COVID but because they cannot really afford to do so anymore. That is why it is very timely that we can take this bill up now. Hindi naman pwedeng skip na lang natin ang pagpunta sa ating mga doktor dahil sa panahon ngayon ay tunay nga, na, tunay nga namang bawal magkasakit. Kailangan tayong umaksyon if we want to make our medicines more affordable and we shall, if we shall regulate prices in addition to aggressive government importation, pooling of purchases of small drug stores to avail of discounts and stocking rural health centers with low-cost drugs are some of the solutions that we are looking at, uh, Mr. Chairman. We should also look at the opportunity to buy low-cost drugs from other countries. Titiyakin natin na ma-update ang expanded list of drugs sa ilalim ng maximum drug retail price or MRDP program, such as medicines for cancer, end-stage renal disease, 
uh, bio biologics for uh, psori psoriasis and lupus, vaccines for pneumonia and flu, hypertension, diabetes, arthritis, asthma, and COPD, as uh, uh, to mention a few. Filipinos, Mr. Chairman and my dear colleagues, have a right to uh, responsible and accessible, affordable health care, uh -uh. which drugs and medicines are a part. We understand Ayan, and support how the business of medicine and pharmaceuticals make scientific breakthroughs possible and delivers life-saving drugs to billions of people all over the world. But we must keep business humane, especially with regards to health. So I look forward, Mr. Okay. Chairman, to a, a, a good discussion on this measure and hopefully a passage of a measure that can really help bring down the prices of drugs. Mr. Chair, may I also just um, ask some of our uh, resource persons on uh, what strides have been taken by national government? I, I'm, I'm sorry I came in late, so I was not really able to hear the explanation of uh, the DOH. I believe uh, the DOH has already pushed for a price list uh, through an executive order. Was it an executive order or department order? May we just uh, ask them once again, Mr. Chairman, I hope you don't mind, if I can get that clarificatory uh, answer from the DOH. Uh, in the absence of a board, I know in the absence of a board, uh, but under the law, uh, the DOH is, a, is, uh, uh, is uh, given the power and authority to come up with the price list, right? The recommended retail price list. Ano na po nangyari po dyan, uh, ma'am, from the DOH, if I may ask Mr. Chairperson? Dr. Guerrero? Uh, thank you. Uh, you thank you're, the you. One, huh? you're the one, yes. Thank you, Chair. So let me have a clarification. Po. The, the, there was already an executive order signed by President Duterte around February last year. So this covered around 80 drugs, uh, including drugs for cancer. Some are drugs for end-stage renal disease, hypertension, diabetes, mostly medications for chronic diseases, which really uh, cost a lot. Uh, right now, there are still 35 more drugs that are already submitted to the Office of the President. So hopefully it will be signed very soon. So we initially submitted a list of 120 drugs and hopefully we complete the, uh, we complete the regulation by this year. Uh, Doctor, uh, Mr. Chairman, yung uh, drugs na listahan na binigay po sa executive order, has it drastically gone down when you put up the price list? Has, have they followed, the manufacturers followed the recommended retail price? So far, based on our monitoring, the uh, there has been compliance by most of the chain drug stores. There are some violators, but we uh, continually submit the list of violators to the Food and Drug Administration for appropriate sanctions. But mostly they, they are compliant, sir. So uh, how many percent do you see the decrease uh, on the prices of these particular drugs, the 80 drugs um, that you had mentioned? Are you using the list of prices that are world around the global prices in other countries? Is that your basis yes, for coming up with the price list? Yes, sir. We reference prices from other countries like ASEAN. There are also some high-income countries there, which are sources of these drugs. Um, so ASEAN, I think, uh, I think it's ASEAN, it's Thailand, I think that is the leader you know, when it comes to uh, the affordable drugs. Thailand as well as India uh, for the Asian region. Is that correct, Doctora? Most of our drugs come from India, right? Yes, from most of our generics come from India. But in terms of affordability, I could say that Vietnam has lower prices than yeah. Philippines. Uh, how, how do you feel? Oh, yes, Doctor, go ahead, please. Yeah, I was just going to ask, Doctor, what is your position on the creation of a board? This was actually uh, originally in the Affordable Medicines Act, and it was removed, unfortunately. You know, eventually it was removed. But uh, what is the position of the DOH on the creation of this board once again? Uh, we board? fully support the, the move to create a dedicated price regulatory board, sir, with the authority. Because right now, it's difficult to regulate prices with so many layers. So there's a committee, and then it goes to the secretary, and then it is up to the president to sign an executive order before we issue a price regulation. 
in other countries there are dedicated boards or committees for that. Could you give us an example of the countries? Canada, India, uh, I could I could uh, submit a, a additional list, sir, but those are the um, countries where there is established price regulation. So Canada has the patented medicines price review board. Okay, thank you very much, Victoria. Thank you very much, Chairman. I'll just listen in to the other questions. Maybe we can ask, the, of course, the stakeholders on their position, uh, particularly on this measure. Thank you, Chairman. Can we go to the PITC Pharma or is it... Uh DTI VP Cortez of the Philippine Pharma Procurement Incorporated. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Chair, just to update the yeah. majority leader, uh, ah. I just wanted to explain that. Sorry, is that okay? Oh. Sige, continue. Uh, about the parallel, Bayan. Oh, sige. Yeah. No, my, my sense kasi was that uh, we have not exploited the different possibilities for bringing in cheaper medicine. To my mind, that's why we were. Uh, talking about it one of the ways is to do parallel importations which uh, indonesia and nepal and many many other countries are doing on a large scale through the government the other thing is the exploitation of the compulsory licensing provision under trips hindi rin natin ginagamit gano eh dun sa wto uh, ando naman tayo sa listahan the uh, third thing is what the majority leader already mentioned, recommending to the president the suspension of VAT and other taxes for uh, essential drugs. So maraming uh, aggressive uh, interventions that could be done. And uh, I'm uh, thinking that perhaps we can explore all these possibilities. We've done parallel importation to a certain degree. Pero ang konti lang, one drug lang under Secretary Romualdez, under Secretary Mar Rojas. So, eto siguro yung mga areas na kung meron tayong regulatory board, maybe we can be far more aggressive with these uh, initiatives. Yes, uh, Madam, uh, Mr. Chairman uh, and uh, Madam Senator, we actually uh, placed already under CREATE, all of us collectively under CREATE, uh, were, were uh, together in... Uh, removing taxes on certain drugs. So nadagdagan po yung VAT-free and tax-free uh, 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 or taxes with uh, particularly yeah. uh, important no, uh, drugs for chronic use. That's, uh, so that's right. Mr. That's one step one. already. Oh, it's a train one, train one and then dinagdagan one. natin sa Create. Oh, that's true. We started with train one and then we, we added with uh, Create. So that's at least an uh, initiative coming from the part of the Senate kasi wala po sa House version yan eh. That was in the Senate uh, uh, version through the efforts of Senator Ralph Recto to make it a bit more affordable. Yes. Um, so um, yes. In the future, I believe that there are several other customs duties, other, uh, other uh, retail and uh, other friction costs that could actually be removed also in the future. Pero like uh, the majority leader said, nag-initiative na talaga yung Senate dalawang beses. No, tanong ko lang, uh, Mr. Chairman, dun sa, sa parallel importation kay Senator Aimee, would you mean to say that when you say parallel organization, same product that's being sold in the Philippines, we import from another country which is lower price. Is that correct? Is it, is it, uh, possible to do so though i mean for example if you buy a product that is let's say pfizer here which is two or three times more expensive but like two or three times cheaper in india uh would pfizer allow us to import the indian pfizer product uh to the philippines uh, it's a question that i'd like to throw to the body if, if they'll allow that yes, or you just have to buy generic yeah um um major Leader, Leader Subiri, that's what we were talking about with the OH uh, Melissa Guerrero kanina. Kasi um, uh, there are some conflicting interpretations about our WTO uh, obligations, but the government does indeed import directly from overseas. Maybe we can ask... Uh, Let's uh, hear from uh, yeah, the agencies. Our, our, our next resource person can possibly explain to us parallel importation uh trips wto as well as past experience hopefully yeah so is this now uh vp cortez of the philippine pharma procurement incorporated uh, uh, educate us sir educate us 
Yes, good morning, sir. Good morning, honorable senators. I'd like to thank uh, all of you for allowing us to be part of this uh, discussion. Uh, first of all, I'd like to clarify, uh, three years ago, we changed our name, company name from PITC Pharma Incorporated into Philippine Pharma Procurement Incorporated. The main reason for that uh, uh, change is uh, to avoid confusion. But we remain to be a subsidiary of uh, Philippine International Trading Corporation. And we are, our company is co-owned by National Development Company. Okay, uh, regarding the uh, parallel drug importation, we started it for in 2000, where the mechanics is such that the very, the very expensive medicines, uh, molecules here by the multinational brands, we try to source it from India, and uh, the idea is to retail it at half the price of, of the, the, the price that is being retailed here. But the idea is we have to accredit uh, uh, privately owned pharmacies or boutiques to be able to carry both. What happens now is that, for example, big drug stores, chain drug stores used to participate. They carry both the multinational brands available in the country and they carry our parallel import. A very good example po is Ponstan, for example. At the time, Ponstan was being retailed at 20 pesos per capsule. That is the Philippine uh, marketed brand of Pfizer. We brought in the same uh, Ponstan by Pfizer of India, and we sell at 9 pesos to 10 pesos. So we've gone into importing a total of about uh, 100 molecules. Uh, and we are able to supply our boutique and bayan with uh, this branch and they retail it at half the price of the available locally available multinational branch okay what what uh, good it it uh, resulted to is that the patients were given uh, the power to choose if they have enough money they will choose the locally branded uh, multinational brands. If their money is uh, a little bit short, they can choose the parallel import. Because at the time, in 2000, we, we observed that many of our Filipino patients are so conscious, uh, brand conscious. What, what the doctors tell them to buy, what, whatever is in the prescription, uh, they follow it to the letter. Even if it means they will have to own something of value to them, nagbenta ng kalawaw para lang makabili ng gamot na pagkamahal-mahal. When the parallel import uh, brands were brought in, they now have the uh, ability to drink the same brand medicine at the half the price. That uh, the butika ng bayan uh, as the idea of uh, uh, the private pharmacies being supplied by the state. But of course, uh, in, in 2008, when the maximum drug retail price has been implemented, or the cheaper medicine law has been implemented, we, we, we tried to test it further. If, for example, one brand has been cut because of the maximum drug retail price has been cut into half, if it is still possible for us to go to India, to Pakistan, or Thailand, and bring in the same brand that has been subjected to the maximum drug retail price, the question is, can we still further cut the cost of, of the same brand? Uh, it's already very difficult. And at the time, we, we decided to discontinue the boutique and buy an operation we thought that more than 95% of the molecules available in the country have already expired patent. And we, we saw that many of the important molecules already have generic equivalent. So this continued it. But your honors, uh, if you look at the Republic Act 9502, we have three mandates there. One is to do full procurement. Two is to 
uh, participate in providing cost containment measures. And three is we are still allowed to do parallel importation. Uh, we look at it as a reserve instrument. And in our experience, because we normally do full procurement, not only for the local government units, but also for some hospitals on important molecules like cancer, mental health, uh, cancer specifically breast cancer and leukemia, and some other expensive like uh, insulin and so on and so forth. We realized that during our full procurement, and Ted Padilla is uh, correct, they, they've been collaborating and cooperating with the government. Many of the willing bidders are multinational, okay? And sometimes, particularly for the cancer meds, we're surprised that uh, the, 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 what you call this, the innovator brands are the ones that win in our uh, bidding. For example, a brand that can, an injectable brand that can be bought at the, the biggest drugstore chain in the country at 45,000 per vial, we were able to procure it the same innovator brand, the same brand from a multinational at 5,000 per, per uh, injectable. But of course, they, they, they look at the idea of it is the government procuring it. We, we did procure it for the Department of Health. The multinational company is happy that their prices are never, never exposed because it is given for free by the Department of Health hospitals. In fact, I look at it as like an advertising uh, piece because when the patient realize that it is uh, a multinational brand, then they keep on looking for it. They keep on looking for it. So the reserve instrument of parallel importation, I think, is working to the government advantage because parang the multinationals are forced to participate in the bidding, especially if we are able to aggregate huge volume because the full procurement idea is being able to consolidate as many requirements of the government whether it's lgu it's uh, department of health or it's it's other government agencies then we're able to uh, consolidate all the requirements and we put together a huge bidding process and many multinational companies, particularly, or even local companies, would like to participate to a one huge bidder, bidding where they don't have to go in each municipalities or provinces or cities and do the distribution themselves. So we always tell our bidders and say, have a look at the total savings that you will incur. For example, having to have not many warm bodies dealing with all the different hospitals or different local government units and factor in all those savings in your prices. So I think that's also one of the reasons why we are able to uh, to get a much lower price. For example, a very good example, Mr. Senators, is the flu vaccine. We used to procure flu vaccine for uh, agencies, government agencies, and there was a time when we we were entrusted with the flu vaccine requirement of the Department of Health. To their surprise, we were able to lower further the uh, acquisition cost that we used to have for this flu vaccine because we aggregate all the requirements. And they were surprised how come we were able to get back to them and say, we give you a total savings of 70 million. We said it's simple, your volume requirement we integrated the requirement of SSS, JSIS, Land Bank, so on and so forth. Even the uh, telemarketers company participated in the full procurement. So the supplier, anyway, there are only three multinational suppliers who flu vaccine in the country. The supplier were happy to lower so much the cost because uh, we not only limit ourselves, Mr. Senators, uh, into procurement we offer implementation of procurement and, and up to distribution, point-to-point uh, -point distribution. We offer warehousing, forwarding. Mr. Chairman. So 
All the savings are being uh, considered into the prices that the suppliers offer. Mr. Chairman, may I just Senator make a quick comment Senator before... Senator Superior me? first, then uh, Senator Gatsalian to follow. Yes, Thank mix. You. Thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, with with uh, respect to my dear colleague, Senator Gatsalian, really quick lang. So, yun nga ang punto natin eh. Um, pwedeng babaan ang presyo ng gamot. We can bring down the cost. So, I don't understand why you, have, you need to buy volume to be able to bring down the cost so much it's an obvious it's obvious that they can actually bring down the cost and still make a profit and if you compare notes uh, mr chairman with the cost of these vaccines in the philippines as compared to india and thailand there you can retail it for that cost that uh, the discount that uh, mr cortez is saying so why can't we sell it already at that discount here in the philippines it's a sad fact mr president uh, mr chairman that really uh, a lot of pharmaceuticals, no, um, and forgive me, Ted, if I have to say this, but, uh, you know, my father was dealing with pharmaceuticals as governor of the province of Bukidnon, buying medicines for the provincial hospital. And they always come in high. And then and then they will offer, uh, Mr. Chairman, they'll offer a rebate, a so-called rebate, which they give 20 to 30 to 40 percent uh, rebate, but it cannot be uh, uh, announced. What is this rebate? It's a form of corruption, right? It's a rebate. But they're not supposed to put it in the books. And then when my father said, this is a true story, uh, and Senator Coco knows my father very well, he would not be lying, because he put this out in the open after that meeting. Sabi niya, humingi sila, na, magbibigay daw sila ng discount na 40%. At yung discount then in terms of cash or kind, ako anong gusto daw, biyahe, regalo, whatever. Sabi ng father ko, hindi, ayoko niyan, bigyan mo ako ng 40% discount. Ang sagot nila sa tatay ko, hindi daw nila maibigay ang discount kasi kung maibigay daw nila ang discount, makakasuhan daw lahat ng politiko sa Region 10 <laughs> na nag-avail na kanilang medical medicine program dahil binili po nila ng mahal. For example, if the drug was being retailed to the provinces for 100 pesos and my father said, no, do not give me 40 pesos, I want only 60 pesos for the drug. Sabi niya, hindi nila magawa dahil yung disparity will open the eyes of COA and pandemic, uh, the, uh, you know, all hell will break loose and you will open a Pandora's box. Pandora's. So, Pandora's box talaga ang mangyayari dyan. So, my point is, wh why can they give you that rebate? Uh, and, 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 and instead of corruption, why don't they just, instead of offering it as in cash or in kind, why don't they just give the medicines cheaper? Kasi pwede naman eh, as said by Mr. Cortez, they can buy cheaper abroad. Why is it being sold in the Philippines so so for so much? That is my lingering question. And parang the day I die, I cannot, uh, till the day I die, and hopefully that will be a long time from now, I cannot understand why we cannot work together, the pharmaceuticals coming up with the proper pricing, pricing that is known in other parts of the world, in our country, to give our people chance to survive. And dami nating constituents, whether it is in the Valenzuela City Hospital or in Cagayan de Oro National, yung ating Northern Mindanao Medical Center or in Bukidnon Provincial Hospital, so many people are dying because they can't afford the cancer medicines that uh, Mr. Cortez is saying at 5,000. It's 50,000 and the province Hello. cannot pay for those medicines, uh, Mr. Chairman. So, um, uh, yun go sana gusto kong tanungin and maybe this could be addressed to my dear friend, uh, uh, Ted Padilla, because he's the spokesperson, of, I be, believe, of the pharmaceuticals, on why we can't bring down the prices to these levels, Mr. Chairman. Uh, take a, uh, before we continue, uh, did I get cut off? Is it my signal or was it the, your signal? Uh, no, jingle, no. did I get cut off? Sir, hindi po, sir. Uh, so uh, okay, it was mixed the uh, signal which got cut off. Uh, before be, before Mr. Padilla responds, because maybe the question of Senator Gachalian is connected. So let's hear first from Senator Win Gachalian. Uh, uh, Chairman, uh, my question is uh, in in line, but not uh, the same. So I'll reserve I'll reserve it, lang po, uh, uh, Chairman. De, sab Win, sabihin mo na para mapag-isipan ano sa sagot. <laughs> sige ba? Sige ba? <laughs> the chairman's, uh, upon the chairman's order. Uh, but Mr. Chairman, I want to ask uh, DOH, uh, Dr. Guerrero, my kababayan from Valenzuela, a very basic question. Uh, and this is in line with the question of our good majority floor. 
Bakit po mas mura sa India at sa Vietnam? Because we keep on going back. Well, is, it, is it the patents? Is it, um, I don't know, is it uh, the raw materials? Is it economies of skill? I'm sure you have studied this uh, and, and, and worked back on why uh, the medicines in those developing nations, just like us, no? developing nations sila, are cheaper. And that makes quite no sense for me that the developing nation is buying from another developing nation. So let me study the cost structure of their medicine versus our cost structure here. Uh, that's it, Mr. Chair. Okay, yeah. okay, Mr. Padilla muna, then Dr. Guerrero. Mr. Padilla, go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, good morning again. And um, um, Senator Miggs, uh, good morning. I, I'm glad to see uh, you are in good health. No? Uh, first, uh, I wanted to also express um, you know, our concern because we're really sorry to hear about the experience that your father, uh, the governor, had gone through. No? This, that will, of course, have to be investigated. But let me also assure you that the members of our association of PIHA which are majority of whom are multinationals, you know, are covered by uh, Philippine, uh, US and UK and European and Japan anti-corrupt practices. No? So any, any activity that is done in any jurisdiction, even outside their home country, is covered by the long arm of their laws. No? If ever any member of ours has done anything of that sort, they should be reported and they will definitely be dealt with by their own particularly their own no, authorities. No? But let me also assure um, Senator Miggs, Mr. Chair, Senator Marcos, no, that our members are covered by a very strict code of practice. No? And to, to indulge in such behavior is, is, is really um, un, unspeakable and it should be looked into. Um, I think Mr. Uh, Senator Miggs, through the chair, I remember when we had a meeting in your office some time back, I, you, you recounted that story. And then you also, at, to pause and you remember that of, of who we were. And you actually did re say that, no, but I know that you guys uh, are covered by the very strict codes of behavior. No? And, I, and we acknowledged your, your comment and we thank you for that. No? So um, I'm very glad that I, I know in, in the heat of the moment, we sometimes um, sweep everybody you know, together. But but may, I, I may, want to may, you. Yes, Mr. Chairman, may I just make that, uh, may I just correct myself? No, it were not, th those were, Actually, those were pharmaceutical companies med, uh, peddling these drugs to local governments. Are usually local, mga local uh, bidders yan. Uh, in fairness to Mr. Ted Padilla and his group, yung tama po sinasabi niya, yung international organizations kasi, uh, they follow strict anti-corruption measures or else they will be shut down in their own localities. That's correct. But this is an ex example. I'm just giving an example on the rebates no, that they're offering. And some of the drugs, maybe they buy it from the multinationals, but they sell it as a package. Uh, those who approach the provinces for the medicines usually are uh, local trading companies. And then they package everything already from multinational drugs to, to uh, generic drugs. Kaya napapasama yung kanila because it's a trading firm that actually sells it. Because if, let's say, the province needs 100 different drugs, from from paracetamol all the way to anti-cancer drugs, hindi po kaya ng isang company niyan, hindi kaya ng Pfizer yan, hindi kaya ng uh, AstraZeneca because they don't have all the products in that list. So usually the ones that approach the province are these trading firms, supposed trading pharmaceutical firms that package it all. So napapasama din yung mga drugs nila. And that's why I put it to their attention. I met with the... Uh, uh, Ted, uh, Sir Ted uh, uh, in the office and to make that known to them that there are uh, people selling to the province. Of course, not you directly. Maybe they buy it from you guys. But we tried to figure out a way on bringing the prices down. So, I mean, in hospitals, uh, I come from a family of doctors. My 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 grandfather was one of the founders of Makati Med. Uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Manuel Fernandez, the father of Philippine dermatology. And my uncles, my mom's brothers are all doctors. And my uncle used to be the president of Makati Med. So we know for, for a fact that um, big pharmaceutical companies, they, 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 uh, they get very close to the doctors. This is a very um, um, uh, known practice. They, they get close to the doctors and then they give uh, certain favors as long as they make sure that they don't put the generic brand sometimes. And then they put the 
lagay mo yung ano yung branded talaga di ba ganun talaga that's how the business is run and that's how you market the products um, and then you give all these uh, benefits to the doctors maybe we can forego all of that in the country and let's just say let's bring down the prices for the sake of our people yun lang appeal ko sana ted and um, and i hope that we can give an answer why it is more expensive in the philippines for the same drug and same brand in Thailand, Vietnam, and in uh, India. Same brand uh, and same company. How can that be, uh, uh, Mr. T uh, Mr. Padilla? Uh, Sir yeah. Ted. Yes, sir. Thank you, Senator Sabiri, and through the chair. Again, Go ahead, sir. Um, Go ahead. If, if, if I may, Mr. Chair, if that's okay. Yeah, so... Go um, Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Padilla. Yeah. Yes, um, you know, we have also been, we have always been compared, as uh, Senator uh, Zubiri and Senator Marcos pointed out, no? we have always been compared to other countries. Now, let me expose or explain. No? We, in the Philippines, has one of the highest out-of-pocket expenses per statistics. No? And why is that? Because, again, unlike other developed uh, markets and even the developing markets around us, you know, we, we do not have uh, a working single-payer system here. For example, um, uh, in, in we talk about uh, in India, for instance, you know, India has actually a population that's 13 times that of our population, which are very in a very strong local manufacturing presence. So that gives them the advantage of volume and economies of scale. No? Now, if, for example, within ASEAN, um, we talk about uh, Thailand, we talk about Vietnam. We are comparable with them, no? but these countries have more or less a you know similar economic status. But yet, if the prices of medicines are are lower there. It's also because they have a single purchaser, a single buyer of these medicines, no? And and that's why they can negotiate. Um, and to answer your point, uh, Senator Subiri, you know, about why the price, why the companies can actually lower it. Again, this boils down to simple economics, you know. If we can, if there's a guarantee of volume and volume can be produced, the cost per unit goes down. And that's why, if there's a guarantee, then. Then, and as uh, Mr. Joe Cortez pointed out, in terms of negotiation, companies can 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 bring down the prices if there is that guaranteed volume that will be done and sustained over a period of time. If it's going to be done on a piece by piece basis, yung thingy, it will be difficult because it's also very unpredictable. It doesn't mean that the uh, that the medicines will be delivered. Um, let's say all at once. It can be a guaranteed volume over a period of time, whether whether a year or if procurement laws will allow even, let's say, two or three years. But once that's locked in place, then that's the price, and that will already translate to better uh, efficient savings. Ted, no? uh, Ted may I just, may just in, uh, interject, no, with the permission yeah. of my colleagues? But it doesn't make sense, uh, my friend, no? It doesn't make sense, and we've had this discussion many times, even on our Sundays when we see each other in church. We've had these discussions that... It doesn't make sense why Thailand, for example, which has a smaller population than us, Vietnam has a smaller population than us, and yet the same branded drug is almost 50% cheaper there than with us. I don't. I really doubt that Thailand does a single purchase for their for their drugs. Maybe Vietnam because it's a communist country. I'm, I'm not familiar with Vietnam, but Thailand uh, uh, is basically the same similarly situated. Uh, capital driven capitalist driven economy as the philippines i'm sure they have several drug stores that sell and peddle the uh, the drugs no yung yung punto ko dyan is uh, hindi ba hindi ba uh, doesn't the pharmaceutical company don't they come up with a one particular price a uh, retail price for the whole you know for the whole region rather than say oh you know what let's make it expensive for the philippines let's, let's make it cheap for thailand or vietnam it doesn't make any sense. Is it because they want to make more profit in the Philippines and less profit in these areas for some sort of reason? I, I, I can't. I, it boggles the mind. I mean, if they really want to help save lives, as their motos all say, the best way to do it is to come up with one single pricing for the whole region, and that way, that then you can then I can understand if if the prices in Thailand and, and Vietnam are the same prices as the Philippines, then we wouldn't have this conversation. I wouldn't even uh, invite that group or, or the multinational group. The problem is, and it's very blatant, Mr. Chairman, is the prices in these countries, which are regional, this is in our region, are so much cheaper than the prices in the Philippines. And I do not know why we cannot appeal to them, no, being country directors. Can't we appeal to the 
bigger higher ups to the bosses of the region and say can't we at least bring down the prices comparable to thailand and vietnam uh why we have not made that push to the big bosses of the pharmaceutical companies uh, ted yeah thank you again um senator zabiri you know senator makes and through the chair you know um there let's be, keep in mind one thing you know thailand has a system where it is mostly or mainly government, and I think Dr. Guerrero can 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 agree. You know that almost nine, more than ninety percent of the uh, purchases or the medicines as dispensed are done actually through government pharmacies, you no, know, for government hospitals, government pharmacies, and that's exactly why, as we are saying, having a single purchaser, you know, a bulk purchaser uh, coming in with the volumes, can sitting down in the table and saying for this amount. What is this? And that's actually also what um, other countries like China and Vietnam are doing. You talk about the communist system. Okay, if you want to set that aside. But Thailand is not a communist country. And yet they can afford to do this. Why? Because they have their universal health care system in place. And yes, we already have the UHC. We, we signed, President Duterte signed that in 2019. And now we just need to put, make it, uh, you know, implement it. One of the good things about it is that what, uh, what Joe Cortez was talking about is actually in those in that UHC law. We can actually do all of these things and get those medicine prices down for, in exchange for a guaranteed volume and uh, and the pooling of, of all resources. No? We can work together on that. There's no doubt. That's that's why we want to move away as, as much as possible. We'd like to move away from an out from depending being dependent on out of pocket uh, expenditures and. And uh, taking this opportunity, I'd also like to thank uh, Senator Marcos for her role in lifting the VAT on medicines, because that actually was a, a one other measure by which we can actually see uh, affordability and accessibility improve. No? Let, let's keep in mind that every little step helps in, 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 this, in this regard. No? And, and so I also want to mention that in in our uh, Senator Zubiri, you know, and perhaps it's, uh, through the chair, uh, Senator Pimentel, back in uh, back in November of 2018, we actually had a technical working group meeting to precisely to discuss uh, Senator Zubiri's bill, which was then uh, filed. This was before universal health care was passed. No? Now, when we discussed the, the, the concept of the Drug Price Regulatory Board, they actually, th those present, many of whom are here today, came to a conclusion, and this was actually chaired by Attorney uh, Jindal, no? uh, that uh, Attorney Jay Kerubin, I'm sorry, you know, that the, rather than have a drug price uh, regulatory board concept, let's look more at a drug market review board. What does that mean? Because if you took it uh, in the working group, the agreement was rather than have, uh, it is a more encompassing board that will review not only pricing, but also other factors that they that they impact access and, ex and availability of medicines in the market. No? So in this proposal, the board will not be bound just to recommend price regulation, but also other measures to improve overall access to medicines for all Filipinos. And everyone in the room came into that uh, accord no? as we as we concluded that meeting that day. Now, um, in in this respect, as much as we also feel that there's no need to create another layer. Uh, with all of these new laws that have been passed during this administration, no? uh, and helping patients and uh, and also helping everyone involved, let's look at that uh, idea instead of just working purely on price. No? So I and, and and I and I and I yield now to to the chair and to and to others who who may also have some comments on that matter. But we can definitely work together. No, let's just remember that. Uh, we are not the same as these other countries because we still have a very much uh, highly out-of-pocket system, which universal health care is supposed to correct and is supposed to uh, in, improve. At the same time, there is an executive order out, Mr. Chair, on a, a pricing negotiation board, which we welcome, no? because that way that is also going to be that is also going to be coming in, working hand in hand with UHC and with the Cancer Control Act. So there, there are many, many ways by which we can do this without having to impose mandatory price cuts, you know, um, and, and, and this is where we stand. Thank you. Nick, it's okay. Na. We can, we, we can talk. Maybe we can uh, continue with uh, the DOH, Senator Gachalian, I think. Uh, uh, 
Uh, si Ma'am Melissa will answer. Uh, sige, but uh, before I recognize Dr. Guerrero, uh, Mr. Padilla, you mentioned the pricing negotiation board. Oh, uh, what, what is this, sir? Well, from what, well, what, 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 what we understand, sorry, Mr. Chair, what, from what we understand, there is an, an order on the establishment of a price negotiation board, which is actually pretty much in, in sync with what we've been discussing here, you know, to, that uh, the government, uh, uh, PhilHealth, for, for instance, will be the one to actually negotiate or, or together with PPPI to, to institutionalize the negotiation for the procurement of medicines as a whole. No? And, and I think the, uh, the private sector is supposed to be able to participate as well in that uh, endeavor. No? Pa confirm natin ito. You, you heard that this is an order, order, order from what uh, department or agency? If I'm not mistaken, Mr. Chair, I think it's actually in institution because institution. Hello, hello. who got cut? Did I get cut or? Kayo. Jingle. You're, you're okay, Mr. Chair. Come sec. Come sec. Sir, nag-vlog kayo. Comsec, did you lose me? Okay na, sir. Ulit. Did you lose my signal? Ako? Konti lang, sir. Konti lang po. Ako na naman. Opo, sige. konti lang. Ah, sige. Uh, I did not hear the response of uh, Mr. Padilla. Pero anyway, ano na? Dr. Guerrero na. Dr. Guerrero, are you... Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, um... Chair, uh, let me just address po yung earlier question of Senator Gachalian on the why India has lower prices overall because India uh, decades ago has invested in the building up of its generics industry. So as you know, it is the pharmacy to the world and it has volume. It has a population niya, more than one, 1. 1.5 billion, I believe. So the market pa lang niya, malaki na yung volume. And it is also supplying vaccines and generic drugs to developed markets and even the United Nations Agency. So yung mga vaccine natin na pre-qualified actually galing po ng India. So I think uh, that's another uh, thing that we need to explore probably in the amendment of the Cheaper Medicines Act. It is because we're so dependent on the importation of drugs and we don't really have a very strong and reliable drug manufacturing industry. Uh, just uh, just like what happened here dito po sa COVID where it was really a learning experience na nag-close yung ibang countries and then suddenly we have shortages of several drugs here because we're so reliant. So I think that's one thing that we need to learn from this pandemic na to really build our own local industry. Because even if we have compulsory licenses, so Senator Aimi is asking about the compulsory licenses. Yes, we have those instruments in the law. So that means at any one time when the Secretary of Health declares we need this drug to address a public health emergency, we can have this patented drug manufactured by our generics industry, but then wala namang capacity po mag-manufacture yung local natin. So that's the gap there. So we don't really have a very strong local manufacturing industry. So that's something that we can support also with the strengthening of the Cheaper Medicines Act. On the... Yeah, and then yeah. I, I made that manufacturing. Ang masakit pa dyan, tayo yung nauna. Nung uh, dekada 70, tayo nag export and Filipinos actually set up so many of the uh, pharma factories in uh, Southeast Asia, including Thailand and Indonesia. It's uh, really dismal uh, today that uh, this very uh, promising start uh, did not push forward. Um, maybe later on we can also ask Mr. Chair what is the government doing specifically to encourage the local pharma, local manufacturers? Because we hear from farm, from time to time that there is some kind of a pharma area in Bulacan na sunod-sunod naman yung mga factory, kaya lang hindi naman tinutulungan talaga. There's also the example of Vietnam where the eco zones, may eco zone na strictly pharma and health lamang. Kaya they were able to respond to the COVID crisis so quickly. So these are ideas that we need to explore. After all, gayahin lang natin yung best practices. Thank you, Senator Marcos. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, so Doctor. Let me just add po dun sa price negotiation board because that has been raised. So just to clarify po, the board is now 
constituted. It was created by virtue of the universal healthcare law. And the purpose of this board is to negotiate on behalf of the government. So ang main purchasing authorities kasi natin, Department of Health and PhilHealth for universal healthcare. But this is only meant to address the um, prices of single source patented medicines, not for all medicines. So kailangan po, we can directly negotiate, uh, but only if the product has a single source, only if the product is patented, because the rest of the medicines can be subjected to other government instruments like competition, procurement, bidding. So, but only those with patents po are the ones subjected under price negotiation. And hopefully we can have this uh, functional this year, especially with the cancer cancer law. Na marami pong high price medicines for that. Uh, yun pong kanina rin discussion on the pricing. I think yung traffic magkaiba yung presyo dito compared to other countries. I, don't, I think we, we have to look at it not as simple as that po. Because you have to look at pricing at different points of the supply chain. When we review the pricing of medicines in the Philippines, when we were doing the review for Executive Order 104, what we found was that um, at different levels of the, the supply chain, may mga patong. So for example, even if uh, a wholesaler from PHAP or the PCPI already, oh, ito yung uh, wholesale price. Pero pagdating po sa private hospital, lalo na po sa private hospital, ang laki po ng patong. And, and that is the role of the... MDRP, it is to correct the inefficiencies in the market. So kahit po ang PHAP companies magbigay ng ganito lang yung presyo kung magpapatong naman po yung drugstores and private. So I can tell you po, even our own DOH hospitals, we before we issued the regulation of markups, I saw one vial of drug. It's a cancer drug. Uh, ang benta po niya ay parang 80,000 and then ang pagbenta sa pasyente para naging 125,000 for a, for a single vial. So I don't understand also the the markups being applied. And this is something that, uh, the the price regulation through the MDRP addresses it that it is not just dun sa point of wholesale but at all levels of the supply chain. Senator Sherwin, may I add, may I add uh, oh, sorry. So, May I add, Mr. Chairman, to what uh, Dr. Uh, Guerrero had just said, uh, my, my, just really quickly, and that we, that sometimes make them worse than terrorists, Mr. Chairman. They are worse than terrorists because these are people in the hospital who need life, who need the lifeblood of medicine and to stay alive. And yet, papatungan nila ng ganun kasing amount na kung hindi man lang mabuhay dahil sa gamot, mamatay dahil sa billing. That's a sobrang taas ng billing. Totoo po yan, Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman. That's why I consider them another form of economic terrorists and saboteurs because it is so much you can make profit, but you don't profit from the misery of these people. That's what I've been pushing for from day one. Thank you. Thank you for, sorry for interrupting, thank, uh, Mr. Thank, Chairman. Thank you for that manifestation, Majority Leader. It right? captures actually the uh, sentiment of the people and the... Uh, frustration that we are, uh, diba? frustration and maybe desperation that we are slowly uh, feeling. Huh? So, delikado po yan. Pag, uh, pag kakalat kalat na yan, worse than a pandemic yan, that will be a social volcano. Actually. So, uh, Senator Sherwin, you have follow up? Yeah? Yes, but uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you for the uh, response of uh, Dr. Guerrero. And uh, hearing that, uh, Mr. Chair, it seems to me that the whole supply chain wants to profit from this, you know. And because sometimes the specialty drugs are very hard to come by, uh, marami mo talagang uh, umabu. So, so um, it seems to me that this type of law is needed to send the signal that uh, government is ready to use uh, the law in order to deliver uh, medicines to our constituents. Uh, maganda na rin ho, Mr. Chair, di naman ibig sabihin na may ganitong law, the government will use it. But it's a signaling to all actors in the medicine industry, from pharma to, to the supply chain to hospital, that government is ready to use the law in order to deliver uh, help to our constituents through cheaper medicine. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Okay, uh, let's recognize the consumer sector. There's a raising of hand, uh, digital hand by the laban uh, consumer. Tama po ba yan, sir? Attorney Dimagiba? Yeah. Kamusta po kayo, Senator, Mr. Chairman? Senator Win, nakita ko din. Senator Marcos. Uh, Mr. Chairman, meron lang akong tanong kay Dr. Guerrero. Uh, suppose there will be a second second batch uh, where the maximum drug retail price uh, will be promulgated. Tapos na po yata yung public hearing, consultation with the technical working group. Uh, mga, if I remember right, uh, Dr. Guerrero, mga 33 o 60 molecules pa yata yun. Uh, kailan po ba may issue yung executive order? Nasa, I think, final stages na po ng review sa Office of the President. We have already uh, consulted all the stakeholders, you, the consumers, even the industry uh, will be affected. So, uh, nasa office of the president na po. I think nire-review na po nila. Uh, thank you very much for the update, Mr. Chairman. Alam nyo, 17 Congress pa itong creation of a drug price regulatory board, no? I remember we actively participated in the House Committee, si dating Congressman, the Elder Biron, no? And uh, also in your committee uh, here in the Senate, uh, um, but meantime, you know, we we actually loaded the DOH for that program of uh, implementing the cheaper medicine law now uh, through that maximum drug retail price executive order. And there will be another list forthcoming. It's very helpful because both MDRP, Mr. Chairman, were issued or will be issued the second one during the time of COVID-19. So maganda po yung timing niya, although the preparation, the study all took place sometime in 2019. Hopefully, uh, with the update of Dr. Guerrero, I know her personally because we worked together on this, uh, that that second executive order will be issued soon. As the Congress deliberate on a formal process through this uh, Drug Price Regulatory Board. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Guerrero, yung uh, inclusion in the EO talagang nakatulong naman sa pagbaba ng presyo. Meron tayong before and after uh, figures. Yes, Mr. Chair. We will submit po yung before and after prices. And some patient groups have already thanked po the Department of Health, especially yung po may mga kidney disease. Sila po kasi yung mahal yung maintenance. So, 80 plus yan, sabi mo? 80 na, no? 80 plus... E 85, I think, was the EO 104. There's another 35 forthcoming kung ma-sign po ng Office of the President. Okay, pero uh, tuloy, our, our crusade will continue, no? Uh, Majo, mix this crusade. This is a crusade and advocacy. This will continue. Kasi kung bloated na yung uh, initial price, nag-discountan mo, eh, tapos happy na tayo dahil discounted. Pero bloated, baka bloated pa rin yun, hindi ba? So, we, we will continue with this crusade to uh, look for the uh, mo reasonable, the most reasonable and affordable price of medicines to be made accessible to the Filipinos. So, yun po ang gawin natin. So, this will now be the advocacy of this uh, committee which we will try now to capture through this law. Mukhang kaya naman eh. When we say Drugs and Medicine Price Regulatory Board, we can empower the board to do everything which affects the price. Uh, ano si mo, uh, Majo, uh, if lagyan natin ng power yan, even yung pagsusponsor ng mga trips ng doctor sa mga conferences, uh, if that adds to the price, uh, ano yun natin yan? I mean, that should not be beyond the reach of the board. Ano, ano Actually, si mo, Majo? Actually, Chairman, tama sinabi ni Dr. Guerrero. She just mentioned it uh, right there and then. Even in the private hospitals, yung patong napakalaki. Imagine 80,000 naging 125,000. That's a 45,000 increase. My goodness. So, um, uh, things like that, we can look in. The board The board can look into and then you can put penalty clauses on that. Uh, uh, you know, magagalit sa akin yung mga uncle ko, pero ganun talaga. You know, we have to... We have to put uh, uh, health of the people priority at this point in time. More government policymakers, lalo na tayo sa Senado, 
we dictate policy and i think this is a good policy to have uh, especially right now lalong dumami yung mahihirap natin mga kababayan senator coco because of this pandemic are you looking at an increase of the uh the poor the rates of our poverty uh people in poverty uh increasing by almost 20 percent if i'm not mistaken so in that being less than 20 percent poverty rates of the philippines you're probably looking at back to the rates of 30 to 40 percent no uh uh this is self-rated poverty so they need all the help they can get and at this time of the pandemic bawal nga magkasakit they need all the medicines that they can get particularly yung uh, maintenance medicines. So, IUC natin, let's work with them. But I'm willing to work with Mr. Padilla, with Ted, uh, and this group. Let's come up with a board that uh, is uh, uh, that can do its job efficiently, effectively, but also listens to the, uh, the needs of the uh, pharmaceuticals. But let's come up with a win-win solution, not for them. Not for the pharmaceuticals, but the win-win solution, Mr. Chairman, for the consumers, for the, for the patients, for the people. Tama po yan, uh, Chairman. Thank so, you. And um, uh, napapasalamat po ako sa DOH nga po. And, and if we can also be given a list, yung listahan, Chairman, yung kay Melissa, uh, kay Ma'am, kay Dr. Melissa, yung, yung uh, listahan before and after. Maganda po yung before and after na makita po natin yung before and after, uh, Doktora. Thank you. Na... Napakagandang topic nitong bills ninyo, uh, Senator Mig, Senator Marcos. Uh, if we can really do a good job here, this can be a game changer. Huh? I mean, uh, where, 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 where the effect of the law will really be felt by the people immediately. Sana ganun nga ang mangyari. So, let's, uh, uh, ako medyo, medyo na-inspire ako sa exchanges ngayon. Na the, the, the problem is real. Yun importante sa natin. Eh. We have to we have to confirm first that the problem is real and there are solutions. So, but sa Pilipinas hindi natin ma-match yung solution yeah, sa problem. <laughs> oh, sige, teka. Senators Marcos and Gatchalian are both raising their hands. Mag-ladies first uh, tayo. Oh, Senator Marcos. Okay, mabilis lang. Hindi babanggitin ko lang kay um kay, kay Leader Subiri na meron sinabi kanina ang uh, DOH na sana yung price increases huwag masyadong hihigit sa inflation rate. Eh maganda kasing suggestion yun kasi kung minsan yung price increase ma-heart attack ka na para sa heart medicine. Dahil lumobo ng todo-todo, ang gulatan eh. Tama yung sinabi niya. The other thing, I'm not certain if we've talked about it, but uh, we will have to uh, get rid of the senior citizens and the PWD discount. Kasi hindi naman pwedeng 20% menos pa doon sa inimpose na discounted rates na ng regulatory board na to. Para clarification lang, para maliwanag saan tayo. Nabanggit rin ng DOH yun, uh, ina-underline ko lang. Uh, pero Senator Aimee, uh, may, may, some of us may not agree uh, with that. Uh, I mean, <laughs> kasi yes, I because understand. that's, not, that's I a benefit. Eh, so. I understand. Kaya alam uh, yung 20%, hindi ko alam kung papayag pa yung mga pharma niyan kasi binabagsak na natin. Correct, But, correct. Uh, correct. Uh, I suppose that's another thing that we have to uh, uh, study and uh, for future reference kasi baka maging major distortion na yan sa price. Fair so, warning lang po. Uh, that's, that's an angle which is being uh, shown to us, no? uh, open to us, a perspective no? of being uh, shown to us. Okay, Senator Wynn, you're raising hand. Mr. Chair, I just have two questions to uh, Dr. Guerrero. Is she still there? Uh, nawala yata ho siya. Yeah, so Dr. Guerrero. Yes, uh, I have two questions lang. Number one, yung EO ba, the executive order, is it recommendatory or regulatory ang powers? And then number two, I just want to play the devil's advocate, Mr. Chair, if you allow me. Uh, of course, the economists will always frown upon uh, price regulation no? because it's counterintuitive. Uh, so, in your experience and analysis, uh, Dr. Guerrero, uh, this type of medicine price regulation can it affect innovation and um, access? Because uh, obviously, the the uh, reaction of the pharma 
is to pull out the medicines and in effect it will affect our access so if from your observation and analysis um uh, phenomenon whenever you put uh, uh, price regulation on medicine so those are my two questions uh Mr. chair mr chair if i may yes go ahead doctor Opo, uh, I'm sorry po, baka yung faulty yung internet ko. So, I hope I'm clear. So, uh, for this question, the Secretary of Health right now is recommending to the President. So, ultimately, it is the President who will sign an executive order before price regulation takes. Pwedeng hindi pirma ng Presidente, pwedeng. Oo, pwedeng lahat. Uh, Ma-include dun sa executive order, pwedeng hindi. Uh, dun po sa, can it, can it curtail access? That is why this is a very careful balancing act. So we study each medicine carefully and we make sure po na we balance all the perspectives coming from the consumers. Of course, they want affordable access and also dun sa pharmaceutical industry na sustainable naman yung, and yung price points. Uh, but, but then again, I would argue what good is a drug Kahit po life saving ko hindi naman mabili ng gobyerno or hindi mabili ng pasyente, di ba? So, you really have to make your prices affordable. I mean, there are drugs right now which cost mga cancer po na nagpapabili sa Department of Health, 5 million per patient. I mean, kahit po developed countries, nahihirapan po. In fact, there's a whole WHO cancer pricing report that, uh, that really made medicine prices a, a global issue and yun lang we have to balance po all perspectives but I hope the industry understands it it's not the job of the government to get you out of business but to to approach or to achieve a price level and affordable a win-win solution for everyone okay. to add to that Mr. Chair I guess the regulation does not only target pharmaceuticals but also the supply chain as explained by uh, Dr. Guerrero, because in, in, in that supply chain, there are traders, like I said in my job, Anita, before, the traders also make a lot of money, and then when it's the hospital, the uh, hospital makes a lot of money also. So, thank you, Dr. Guerrero. Um, Mr. Chair, magaling mo talaga yan si Dr. Guerrero, taga Valenzuela ho yan. Uh, Senator Sherwin, former mayor of Valenzuela, I, I, I agree with what you said. Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, uh, maybe we should empower this board sa TWG natin pag-aralan so that it will have all the powers necessary to, uh, to to determine and make a reality a the reasonable price for each medicine. So hindi lang yung sa, tignan natin yung customs duties niya, freight cost niya, uh, yung mga sponsorship niya plus yung mga markup per step in the supply chain finally yung markup sa drugstore na or sa hospital uh, Dr. Guerrero yung nakita mo bang 80,000 na naging 120,000 was that a private hospital or a government hospital? Uh, I, DOH hospital po oh, I can report po. DOH hospital Pero, government hospital DOH hospital, hospital. Government hospital po yung nakita namin. But the prices, the markups are really uh, more... Yes, yes. Example, uh, example, example, example lang po, po yung... Example lang po yung specialty uh, medicine. Uh, ang gusto ko lang ipalabas, yung example na naibigay mo, involve a government hospital. So, <laughs> imagine mo yun. Uh, anyway, yes, Mr. Chair. Opo. Yes, but yes, but we have you. already addressed this. this kasi po, yes. nag-issue na rin kami ng bagong regulation ng markup sa DOH hospital. Sige, i-compile namin po lahat yan when we now uh, go, uh, work on this in a technical working group. That we will try our best, uh, Majo. We'll solution na natin ito. One shot deal with all our, our, our energies, uh, Senator Marcos. Senator yes, please. Uh, uh, in the I, pro I promise you, uh, Chairman, in the, pro will, in the floor, we will prioritize it so that we can tackle I it will, in the floor. Uh, I promise you. I will personally uh, attend uh, and supervise the TWG para we get all of the uh, information that we need. May Mr. Padilla, yes. were you raising your hand? And then all, yes. And then and then uh, after Mr. Padilla, all the others now who want to say something about this bill because we will we will move on to another topic. No? So, Mr. Oh, Padilla, yes. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. No, um, just a few points long before before I I um, take my leave. No, I just wanted to mention that we do support having a strong manufacturing, uh, far, like a pharmaceutical manufacturing industry here. No, and we have actually submitted a position to the DPI on the matter. No, we to to help with our suggestions on how to make the Philippines an attractive place for investment. No, uh, in that paper, so we would be happy to share that with you. Um, one thing that we also have um, asked from the Department of Health is to conduct an impact assessment no, of the policy of the executive order, the maximum retail price, no, to, to, to see firsthand if it is really um, achieved its objective no, of improving access. Because again, as in the past uh, um, MRP, which the, the first round, you know, uh, there were cases where actually some companies did pull out and, and many products also disappeared. No? And if you were to look at the level of uh, new product introductions in the country, we there there are not that many compared to our neighbors, no. Because again, there for for various reasons, uh, including the, uh, the unsustainability, no, of policies, no. But again, we are with you in understanding that patients come first, no. And that's why there are already various tools in the UHC which we very much support, no. That we should make use of in the National Cancer Control Act as well, no which is the pool procurement, price negotiation, uh, the strengthening of manufacturing in the Philippines. You know. So uh, bear in mind that all price regulation, as you also point out, Mr. Chair, and Senator Nguyen Gatchelian, it has its risk. You know. And uh, we hope that the DOH and Congress will also look into this. You know. And uh, we believe that a drug market review board would be much more encompassing, you know, as we discussed in your committee back in 2018. You know. Uh, even in, in in light of the, of the and particularly with UHC and the NICA laws in, in in place, this would actually be I think dovetail nicely with with uh, with what uh, the DOH with what your respective um, uh, owners would want to achieve for the public and for the country. No? And we continue to reinvest in innovation, and that's why uh, that's how we were able to come up with the vaccine speedily. No. So we look forward to working with you in this matter, Mr. Chair, and to participate actively in any TWG that you shall call. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yung Drug Market Review Board that you have mentioned also includes the power to regulate uh, prices, di ba? That's so, right. Tama? That's correct. Tama. Okay, tama. okay. So yeah, we, we, can, we can harmonize the concepts. Okay. No problem. Uh, Dr. Guerrero, uh, do you have records in the DOH about uh, drugs being withdrawn from the country or pharmaceutical companies, foreign, uh, which have closed the shop because uh, they didn't like our drug pricing policies or they found our market not to be profitable? Meron ba tayong record na ganyan? So we are yet to conduct a review of the current price regulation, but we have a, a review during the last Arroyo executive order. We can submit that. Wala oh, naman sa mga withdraw, sir. Past, past experience natin, meron bang... Meron bang popular drug na hindi na, na no longer sold? Basta yung, 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 oh. Yeah, so so the la, the first EO was passed by President Arroyo then. So only six or five drugs were affected. Kaya hindi siya ganun kalaki yung impact. So wala naman pong nag-pull out. In fact, after the price regulation, nagtumaas nga yung volume of sales ng, ng drugs at, under MPRP. Okay. Can, okay. Uh, Comsec. Can we ask the Philippine Competition Policy to just submit the, uh, their position paper? Because there was there was a concept introduced by Mr. Padilla. Yung sabi niya is uh, uh, price regulation versus uh, competition. So let's let's uh, get their point of view from the yes, competition sir. side. So huh? We will invite them. We will ask them to submit. Okay, let's formally write them, and yes, then sir. to last last. Uh, last last matter on this uh bill on these bills you the point of santo marcos is dti present what is the state of our pharma manufacturing industry in the philippines meron ba uh, at ano ba ano bang ginag ano bang napoproduce natin dito is D dti present who's the highest ranking dti representative Sir, uh, VP Jose Cortez represented the DTI for this agenda, sir. 
si Sir Jose Cortes kanina po. The ones of PITC. Ah, si Mr. Cortes pa din. Oh, Mr. Yes, Cortes, sir. kung wal kung wala, maybe the DOH also knows, no? A DOH, uh, Dr. Guerrero, do we do we do we have a pharma a pharmaceutical manufacturing industry in the Philippines? We do have, sir, but there are only a few who are, who we can say are strong manufacturers. Mostly producing we import po kasi. Producing what? Mostly oral forms. Uh, yung IV hindi masyado. The biologics, no. Uh, uh, we can submit, sir, uh, the report of the local pharma on what they can manufacture. We can ask them to submit. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I was going to say kasi in the light of uh, CREATE, natapos na yung rationalization ng fiscal incentives. Siguro we can carve out within that uh, something for special pharma ecozones, which have been the reason for, for the great success of both India, Thailand, as well as, of course, Vietnam now. Thank you. So thank you, ma'am. Uh, uh, does that... Uh, is, is that... Uh... PESA? Does that involve PESA, Senator Mar I Aimee? Mean? Yes, po. that involves oh. PESA. And uh, it's strictly devoted to pharma and health production. So it's a very attractive way of bringing in investors in one uh, area. Baka naman pwede yun. So, uh, uh, Committee Secretary, can we formally ask PESA for a position paper on the idea? Actually, uh, Mr. Chair, you yes, can uh, also Senator ask... Um, Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. We can also ask uh, Senator Pia in her office to provide us provisions of the CREATE, which should be very, very helpful to the pharmaceutical companies. Marami po tayong essential industry kasi siya. Under the essential industry, pasok siya sa priority list. Uh, right? CREATE rationalizes all fiscal incentives. So there are a few uh, locators, for example, in uh, PESA areas that will be affected by it. Those who are already operating for the last 20 years, not paying taxes. However, under CREATE, we also come up with provisions for expansion of existing players and new players. So I think PHAP can take advantage of that. Uh, we It's a generous uh, uh, generous uh, uh, package of incentives. Up to 17 years yata, yung, uh, yung uh, income tax holidays and tax uh, 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 privileges given to them. So it's something that we can probably, hindi pa siguro alam ng group on Mr. Padilla. Uh, Ted, we have this fantastic package under the new CREATE measure. Not to mention, Mr. Chairman, we bring down corporate income tax by 25% from 30%. So, kita ka agad yun. That's a 5% increase of their income. So, um, it's a big help for these industries. I One think last theory. Uh, One last theory na lang kasi uh, the... Uh, the consensus worldwide that there should be a uh, patent pool, a shared patent for all countries, particularly in the wake of COVID, uh, it's gaining ground. Eh? So uh, we should be ready with our own pharma zone so that we can uh, take advantage of local manufacturing once the uh, patents are released for production for everyone. That's the only way we can guarantee supply. Cheap and reliable supply. Okay, Mr. Okay, Mr. Padilla. Yeah, just, just one, no, just one quick point. Uh, thank you for uh, Mr. Chair and um, Senator Meigs no, for mentioning that. Uh, one, one concern that has always plagued, and it's not just the pharmaceutical industry, but other industries, is the cost of power, the cost of electricity. So if these um, zones can actually provide more. On top of you mentioned the, the fiscal incentives, you know, they could actually provide that because that has often been a, a that's a common uh, a common finding in when with economic think tanks, you no, know, that it's the cost of power that actually uh, that turns uh, industries off from actually expanding. You know? So that would be very of very very helpful to everyone. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anybody else who wants to be heard on this topic before we leave it? Just call my attention. Kung wala na po. Sir, si Attorney Santos po. Attorney Santos of the Philippine Retailers Association. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. 
Uh, just one comment uh, regarding the proposed creation of the Drug Price Regulatory Board. I noticed the composition of the board. And uh, would it be possible, uh, Your Honor, to include a representative of, uh, of the industry as well? Because uh, being the, I mean, the retail industry in this board, because especially for the drug stores, because being the uh, being the or industry group that will bear the brunt of implementing uh, the rules to be implemented by this proposed body, I think it, it's a good idea to install an industry representative uh, to this uh, proposed committee, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, well, we will tackle that in the technical working group, but we will make sure that whatever board we create consults with all the stakeholders. Ganun po importante. That there should be a consultation. If, if, if should there be no representation within the board, there should be a consultation. Anyway, the debates will be done in the TWG, sir. Ayusin natin yan. We have heard the recommendation. So, uh, anybody else? Sana si DTI... Uh, na lang natin ng position paper or report on the Pharma Zone Initiative. Uh, Committee Secretary, I just write the DTI BO. Okay, so with that, with that, I think we have uh, discussed this uh, sufficiently. Ah, uh, ano, ano, come, come sec, come sec. What did you say? Okay, so we can move on. Another topic, uh, we have formed the TWG for this uh, uh, two bills. Uh, Attorney Kerubin, please uh, invite all of those uh, interested and uh, inform the senators personally so we can attend the TWG and re really involve ourselves. Yes, sir. Uh, subukan na natin ito once and for all <laughs> kung, ka kung kaya. Thank you. Thank you, malaking bagay. Uh, kung Kung kaya, ng, kung kaya ng Thailand, kaya ng Vietnam, ka, kaya din natin. Kaya din natin. Kaya ng Canada. Thank you very much, Tara. Mr. Chairman. Ha? Salamat, Mr. Chairman. At least it's something Tara. to work with and look forward yes. to. Maraming models. Maraming naman models we can uh, uh, look to. Okay, so we now move on. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Those uh, whose, whose business has uh, finished with the committee, thank you. Uh, thank you. You can, you can leave us. Uh, thank you very much. Can we? Thank can you, we Ted, thank, thank you, Ted. Thank, thank you. you. Can we tackle? Weeks. Can we tackle Senate Bill One Five One Five, the the bill of the Senate President? Because this is time back. This is uh, this provides for the employers' liability protection from COVID nineteen. So time bound po ito. Uh, uh, who have we invited as resource persons for this uh, topic? From DTI, sir. I lost my... Uh, ASEC, Joan Karen Riola, please. Yes, ASEC of DTI. Have you read the bill? Yes, Mr. Chair. Good uh, morning, sir. Um, on one five, one five. DTI. Asik, Joan, Riola, go ahead. Yes, Mr. Chair, thank you very much for this opportunity. On behalf of the DPI, we, consistent with our mandate, under RA 9501, Mr. Chair, we manifest our support for this bill. Of course, subject to the labor laws safeguard Thank you. Thank you, ASEC Riola. Do, do we have a DOLE representative? Yes, or, or ECC representative? Good afternoon, po, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, please identify yourself, ma'am. I'm Queen Felicitas. Yes, yes, Chair. I'm Queen Felicitas yes, from the Bureau of Working Conditions of the Department of Labor and Employment. Uh, in behalf of the department, we manifest our support to SB and 1515 
considering that it is the current practice or the current rules that is being observed wherein employers are not directly liable should there be work-related um, illnesses such as COVID. And we just would like, however, to highlight that this exemption is subject to compliance with payment of SSS and other applicable rules and regulations. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Ma'am Espinas, when you said that, uh, are you saying that's pursuant to present law? This is this is all the subject matter is already being achieved pursuant to present law or just a present regulation? Uh, sorry, Mr. Chair, present regulation, sir. Oh, can you cite the regulation, please? Um, um sorry, and Mr. Then, Chair. And, and then on what on what law is the regulation based? Um Sorry, Mr. Chair. I, I, this, that is under the EC, as ECC and SSS rules, po. Oh, simply, but, but, but you, you seem to be familiar nga with this, eh. So, ca can you cite? Uh, can you cite us my resolution number or decision number? Ganon. Uh, kung kaya lang. Kung, I, if you need more, if you need more time, you can communicate with the committee na lang in writing. We will just include it, sir, sa possession paper po ng Department of Labor. Yes, uh, kasi, because if that is the case already, then uh, enacting a law on the same subject matter might even give the impression that before the enactment of the law, that was not the rule. Mm, yes, sir. Oh, nga, so, what I'm trying to say, Mr. Chair, is that at present, employers po are not automatically liable if there is a if the employee becomes covid positive uh, what the employee can do is that they can file for easy claim before the employees compensation commission through the sss and it is the ecc who will provide for the benefits po. Uh, okay so so uh the the employee still has a remedy except that uh, it, it's now it's a different entity, no longer the employer, but the ECC. Yes, sir, through the SSS. Po. Uh, so ult ultimately, it, it is the SSS whose whose pocket whose pocket will now answer for the damages uh, experienced by the employee. Um, the the, the EC claim po will be filed through the SSS, and it is the ECC we, which will pay for the benefits. Po. Uh, ECC, uh, ECC. Is there any representative from the ECC, uh, Comsec, or the SSS? None, sir. ECC? For today, we will just okay. uh, send them a letter, po. Okay, let's just ask for the official uh, 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 position paper from the ECC on this uh, subject matter. SSS, na rin, and then the DOLE. Yes, sir. Because if if they all if they all confirm that the principle being pursued by the bill is already the prevailing rule anyway and then the employee is not left without any remedy but the, he has a clear remedy for which he will be he will be adequately and uh, promptly compensated then uh, then maybe that is uh, already uh, what the Senate President wants, and we will just give him a report that uh, that's already the present system. So subject to confirmation, yeah. So we really need uh, these communications from the DOLE, SSS, and uh, ECC. Compared prompt, can you give them a deadline, Comsec, so that we can also find out? But at, but at any rate, uh, at any rate, I hear no objection. No, I, there is no objection from the from the said uh, against the said bill uh, SB one five one five. How about from our are, are there are, are there labor groups or uh, our consumer groups uh, uh, present? Any comment? SB one five one five. DTI. Kayo, pro, kayo yung employer's point of view yata. <laughs> so, okay kayo rito. We support for MSMEs, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, M, uh, MSMEs, pero employ ito kasi employees ang ano to eh. Uh, we, I'm, uh, uh, I'm looking uh, 
from I'm looking at the issue from the point of view of the employees. I mean, uh, uh, for as long as the remedy is there, still there, and it's adequate, it's prompt, then uh, there's, there should be no damage. A consumer group, wala, wala, no, no, no reaction. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, SB 1515, we will uh, endorse to the plenary subject to the inputs, the position papers of uh, three, not, at least three agencies, the OLE, SSS, and ECC. Okay, so... Okay, we can move on to oh, oh top the DTI. Abang and dito ba DTI before they, they take their lunch break. Mm. Let's go to the auto bill, auto Philippines Act of 2020, Senate Bill 1896. Okay, this bill, uh, Attorney Kerubin will uh, my legislative staff will explain to us the essence of this bill. Maganda rin ito eh. Mm. Uh. Ah, Jessie, Jessica. Okay, Attorney Jessica, please ex please uh, just summarize the, you know, the in one in one uh, paragraph. Uh, yes, or sir. In three sentences. Sir. So. Okay, sir. Sir, basically, the auto bill is institu uh, institutionalizing the auto program or the one uh, one town one product program of the DTI. So, uh, by virtue of this bill. There will be an auto program office in each LGU which shall address or help um, local products, uh, well, basically boost the local products of each identified area, sir. Okay, any comments, positions? Uh, let's start with DTI. This is your program. Sino sa DTI? Asik po yata ang dito. Asik, Asik. Na. Sino ba sa DTI? Asik Naga, please. Uh, Asik, Asik Donaga. Yeah. I am uh, Assistant Secretary, Daphna Dunaga. Mm. Um, uh, Department of Trade and Industry, uh, Regional Operation Group, uh, representing the One Town, One Product Philippines. Uh, yeah. Can I request the slide? I forwarded already for the Secretariat. Uh, Mom, we haven't received as of that morning. We can share it from your end. We haven't received anything yet. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway, ma'am, kung mahirap, just send to us na lang the, the PowerPoint or the, you know. But uh, can you state your position on the bill? Uh, I'm expecting you to be fully supportive. Okay. Auto PMM proposed position of the same field. 1896. Generally, the auto PMO welcomed the proposal, saying it will number 1896, otherwise known as the institutionalizing the one town, one product Philippines program. Approximately being planned, therefore, and for other purposes by Senator Ramon Rebilla. Ramon Revelia Jr. The auto PMO also sustained the DTI position of the version put forward and the House of Representatives, namely 
House Bill Number no. 7312, titled "An Act Promoting Exclusive and Sustainable Economic Development Through the Institutionalization of the One Town, One Product Philippines Program." Appropriating fund, therefore, and for other purposes by Magsasaka Party List, Representative Angel Joseph Kabatba, and House Bill Number no. 7672, titled The Act Institutionalizing the One Town, One Product Philippines Program, Appropriating Fund, therefore, and for other purposes. And particularly, SB 1820, uh, 1896 is not only in the line, but it is also enforcement and mandate of the auto as a sign of the executive order number 16, uh, 176 series of 2003, wherein it has been commissioned as one of the GTI priority program in support of the MSME's manufacture, offer, and promote distinguished products and services during indigenous raw materials and talents. Moreover, it is in labor to capacitize entrepreneurs to innovate and produce market ready products and services. However, the auto PMO would like to put forward and following point for consideration. Section 1 of Section 4, definition of term. It can observe that now ever, now we're in the purpose of bill, did, did the concept of large enterprises and non MSME. The explanatory, clearly, and categorically lack and established vice versa overall objective with measured, safe, and to address. To dissolve this common term, and the following we take account Section 4A, if read its relation of Section 9, who may qualify. It can be presumed that the purpose of defining large enterprises is not only what compress such C, but to also establish at the same that not covered qualified within the unbed competition of the act. Section 4B, if freed, in relation of Section 7, forward the definition according to the non MSMEs product would appear as extension of beyond of the coverage of the auto PH program. As such, this may be incorporated under Section 7 only to elaborate what is was covered and what are and what are to not. In addition, the auto PMO would not would like to seek clarification to spoof and identify identify identification of the agreed tool. Presently there are ongoing consultations between the DTI and DBM regarding the proposal of executive order to be issued by the letter, which will facilitate the devolutions of the DTI project to the LGU following the Mandamnas ruling. And view this development, the auto PMO purpose proposes that this matter be taken into the account in the course of the deliberating the bill given that the dynamic between the DTI and LGU as far as the 
management development of the auto is concerned and the purpose of the role of the LGU once measured funds were already discussed in, the, in this act. Yeah, that is the proposed position on Senate bill. Thank you. Thank you, Asek Dunaga, and thank you for pointing out to us the possible effect, the ramifications of the Mandana's ruling. Uh, so we will take this into account. There is a proposed EO now, uh, uh, drafted by DTI DBM on the devolution of or transfer of some on top of some DTI projects to the LGU. So uh, thank you for that information. Uh, in the technical working group, we will take this into account. Okay. But uh, ma'am, ma Asek Dunaga, OTOP, OTOP will remain to be a flagship program of the DTI. Tama po ba yon? That's why we need to also strengthen and institutionalize this through this bill. Ma'am, we cannot hear you, ma'am. Somebody help uh, Asek Dunaga to unmute the microphone, please. Unmute the mic. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. This is the uh, program of the DTI. Unmute, ma'am. Unmute. Yes, 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 ma'am. We, uh, we heard you. Okay. Now. Okay, so the DTI. It, this will continue to be a flagship DTI program which needs uh, help of the national government through institutionalization and uh, def uh, pinpointing of uh, responsibilities, especially with uh, DTI and the local government units, which will be accomplished through this bill. Uh, unless you uh, see... Yusek Tolentino will, will say something. Dominic? Ano mas tumig? Asek? Asek? O, pero numote na kita. Sorry, ah. Uh, unmute, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Senator Coco. Uh, pleasant good morning to everybody. Uh, happy Valentine's every day to all of you. OTOP is one of the best program of DTI and I support ASEC Dunaga to institutionalize. We have created a lot of uh, job opportunities, rebuild the uh, local economy through MSMEs. Mr. Senator, it is our honor to promote and push the OTOP program as an institutionalized program for the country. Thank you very much, Mr. Senator. Okay, any other comments on the bill of Senator Rivilla? Kung wala na, I will form the TWG and encourage the DTI to actively participate uh, so that we can come up with the best possible version of uh, a bill institutionalizing the auto. Uh, we have CDA. Uh, Mayroon bang comment on CDA rito? Sa Auto bill? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Good morning, is, po, uh, is, Senator Coco. It is a co-op development authority. Yes, po. Uh, okay. Dr. Okay. Dr. from CDA, sir. Uh, yes, from sir. Dr. Yes. Dr. Vanera. Uh, actually, we would just like to uh, manifest or uh, we'd like to express uh, our great support for the passage of this uh, proposed bill ng aming mother agency, uh, the Department of Trade and Industry. Uh, which is uh, Senate Bill 1896 or the Auto Philippines Act of 2020. Uh, so in CDA, we share the, in the aspiration of uh, the declared policy of the proposed bill. Uh, and uh, likewise, the Auto program, which is spearheaded by DTI, uh, which aims to boost uh, local economic activity and uh, boost the national economic growth. As uh, we believe in CDA, that this would also be great, uh, or this would also greatly contribute in promoting the further viability and growth of cooperatives as instruments of equity, social justice, and uh, economic development, especially or particularly po doon sa ating mga uh, 
uh, co-ops na nasa micro and small category which is uh, mostly nasa mga municipalities and LGU level po sila. So malaking tulong po itong pag-institutionalize itong uh, auto program ng aming mother agency. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, we will also uh, submit our official position paper as well po sa Secretariat regarding dito sa Senate Bill 1896. Yun lamang po, maraming salamat po. Mr. Senator, uh, Mr. You. Chairman. Who else? Who Sir, else? Mr. Chairman, one manifestation. Okay. I just okay. want to, yes, Senator Coco, I just want to uh, have my voluntary uh, participation as a TWG member, sir, as part of the Regional Operations Group. I would like to support ASEC Donaga and, of course, the DTI family. Thank you. Break na siya. Oh, okay. Thank you. And then, tignan nyo, ha? Uh, Sabi mo kay Jingle, okay lang. Uh, it, it, from 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 the exchange, oh, this is what I, I I get as the benefits of the auto program ah, of the DTI, ah, which we need now, ah, kasi because of the the effects of the pandemic, COVID. Ah, number one, this will generate jobs. Tama, tama. This, according to the CDA, this uh, supports the growth of the co-ops. Uh, this this supports our MSMEs. Uh, existing and of course the, the those the, to be to be to be formed this will develop our local products uh, yes. in the, uh, yes. in the use, using uh, materials available in the locality sabi ko nga dun sa inyong auto uh, events eh uh, doing doing what you do best with even with less you know oh you and you're having fun doing it oh and then uh, this might develop uh, industries, and then, yes. and then, and then, ad ang additional, ang additional benefit. This, this one, this will, this will strengthen now the DTI LGU link or cooperation, uh, especially in the light of the new ruling uh, of the Mantanas. Na uh, we will really have to get them uh, more involved, because they have the additional 388 billion uh, in era. And uh, in share of national taxes going now, flowing from national to local. Also, yes. So, yes. involved natin sila uh, with, with clearly with clearly delineated uh, responsibilities, lines of responsibility, as well as areas of cooperation. So, yun ang ating goal, ha? Uh, Asek Tolentino, uh, Asek Donaga. Yes, sir. Copy, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, ma'am. Asik Donaga, go ahead. She's on mute. Ma'am, you're muted po. Please unmute your mic. Can I share the One Town, One Product Philippines accomplishment for the year of 2020? The, the slide is ready. Okay. Good morning. Foremost, I would like to formally greet the
connection, creativity, and competitive advantage. Meanwhile, the racial flag championed by MSME of Auto Ambassador Catriona Gray aimed at increasing the exposure of auto product as well as for building and elevating Filipino garment and textile through the Moda Initiative. The Laguna province and Sambuanga region were the area that we featured last year. The Laguna tour successfully assisted by five MSME and generated sale amounting of 4.18 million pesos, while the Sambuanga tour successfully assisted 26 MSMEs and had help in generating sell amounting to 2.53 million pesos. This year, we target to feature another excited region that is CAR. Part of Auto Next Generation Product Development Initiative is the intensified product development market access, promotion, and capacity building in Homestead, or IMA. The product, uh, the product evaluation, innovation, coasting, and culinary processes program is online educational program designed and enabled food entrepreneurs to access their current product, check, check their processes, and expand their culinary knowledge and the PEICCP program successfully assisted 271 MSMEs. The FDA LPO CPR capability uh, training for the food sector MSMEs provides MSME knowledge, skill, understanding, and the requirement for food safety regulation by FDA, it was attended by one third, 130 participants. The auto next gen also successfully conducted and or participated in a total of 394 product design development session assisted 4,460 MSMEs and developed 6,530 products. Presented before you are some before and after photo of the product development through assessment, consultation, and redesign of packaging and leveling. It also worth to mention that for the first time last year, we initiated with the assistance of our partner, the conduct of virtual trade fair and the view of the restriction that we impose due to the pandemic. That's our the Pasinaya trade fair last July 20 to 24, 2020, and the Otop the Ascenso National Trade Expo last September 24 to 28, 2020. The Pasinaya successfully assisted 313 MSME from different regions and generated sale amounting to 30.7 million pesos. The Auto Association National Trade Fair along the regional and provincial expo conducted throughout the year of 2020 successfully assisted 1,696 MSMEs and generated sales amounting of 90.8 million pesos. For the, for the trade fair, an auto MSME participated in 335 trade fairs, successfully assisted 5,550 MSMEs and generated uh, 335.7 million pesos sales. 
The Auto Next Generation has 53 physical auto pubs and two virtual auto pubs, with a total of 55 pubs established currently. For 2020, the hub generated a 48.7 million sales and assisted 3,964 employees. Out of 53 physical auto pubs, 47 are active and operational as December 31, 2020. In closing, allow me to share to you Auto Next Generation overall 2020 accomplishment. The Auto Next Gen had successfully assisted a total of 14,378 MSMEs, developed 6,813 products, and generated uh, generated 1.8 billion in sale from different sources. With the national health emergency that we faced because of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, 2020 was a defining movement in the business sectors. Our MSMEs were forced to reinvent business strategy, adapt a new and better normal working arrangement, and all, all together to both plan processes and lay out of their businesses. Our MSMEs never did, but instead fuel and refuel their energy toward their success, which in turn also resulting to the success and the gradual recovery of the Philippines economy. With the resilience of our MSMEs, it is also undying commitment to continue to hustle and go into a great length to come up with solution and intensify and collaboration in institutionalizing programs to capacitate, equip our MSMEs and afford them opportunity to carry on and strive in this new normal and future of post-COVID-19. Thank you for your time and have a good day. Thank you, ma'am. So thank you for that presentation and congratulations. Huh? 1 bill, 1.8 billion in sales generated. So that is how important auto is as a program of the DTI. That's why we will give it full support. And if there are no more comments on the topic, uh, we will now form the, uh, the TWG so that we can finalize the version of the bill we will submit to the plenary. Okay, so I, uh, what jingle? FDA would like to uh, make it. Okay, on, on auto, on auto, pass again, okay. FDA. Uh, okay, sir. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. So I would just like to read the position of the Department of Health, particularly this involves the the comments uh, or the inclusion of the Food and Drug Administration on the, the institutionalizing of the auto. So, so the Department of Health supports the Senate Bill 1896, which seeks to institutionalize the one tap one product program to, simul to stimulate economic activities of local small and medium enterprises, SMEs across the country. So according to the World Bank, SMEs have a crucial role in developing countries as it contributes to creation of jobs and development of the global economy. This role can be maximized when supported by the national government and other stakeholders. But such, the department interposes no objection to the passage of the proposed measure into law. However, it must be understood that all food and drug products pursuant to the Republic Act Number 9711, the Food and Drug uh, Food and Drug Administration Act of 2009, should undergo FDA's proper regulatory monitoring and standards compliance. So this is to ensure that the products are safe and are not a threat to the health of Filipinos. 
Further, the department provides the following recommendations for consideration. So on the objectives, I would just like to recommend to insert the phrase and securing licenses, product registration, and other market authorization. And on the section 10, still on the capacity building, also to include uh, the price securing licensing, product registration, and other marketing authorization. And we also uh, propose to include the food and drug administration as one of the members of the auto management committee as the most commonly declared auto products are processed food products and also cosmetic products, including perfumes, laundry, and soap products. And also involve FDA in the auto programs at the local government unit LG levels to ensure full compliance with the provisions of the FDA Act of 2009 and the Republic Act uh, 10611, the Food Safety Act of 2013. Lang po, sir. So, nabanggit naman po kanina ni ASEC na there are seminar training on the, the FDA licensing and registration. So, uh, yun po. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you uh, to the FDA. So, Considered then noted and uh, to be considered during the TWG. So if there are no more comments, the committee secretary will form the TWG so that we can refer this to plenary at the soonest possible time. Okay, thank you to all our participants, ma'am. Thank you, thank you to the DTI FDA. Ngayon ganito, uh, we are running out of time because I, I intend to adjourn or suspend the hearing by 1 p.m. So Siguro we have sufficient time to tackle BPA and the trans fat free bills. But to those who joined us for the SB 632, the Warehouse Receipts Act, and SBN 1798, the Heavy Equipment Registration Act, we mean uh, we will not tackle these two bills anymore this afternoon. We will just uh, schedule again another hearing no, for this for these uh, two bills. So for those who attended this uh, the, the hearing this after uh, today for these two bills, uh, thank you very much for joining us, and uh, you have um, the chair's permission to already leave us as we will no longer tackle the two bills. So let's move on now to the BPA BPA in Child Care Articles Prohibition Act, Senate Bill Number Thirteen Twenty. So. Self, this bill is self-explanatory. Yes. So, uh, DOH, DOH, FDA, Katari is, is, is involved here, no? FDA, oh, oh, who's raising her hand? Uh, Mom is from, from FDA, sir, DOH F and FDA. May I be allowed to read our position paper? Director, Director uh, Ribola, Tebera, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Okay, sir. Thank you very much for allowing us to read our position paper on Senate Bill Number 1320, which is an act prohibiting the use of BPA in food, baby food packaging and containers and other childcare articles, providing for its replacement with safer alternatives. So the Department of Health supports the intent of Senate Bill Number 1320 which seeks to prohibit the use of bisphenol A in any food and food packaging and containers for infants. So the DOH interposes no objection to the passage of the, me of the bill measure into law because it is aligned with the FDA Administrative Circular Number 2019-004, which bans BPA in child care articles, specifically feeding bottles and sippy cups. Section four of the said issue one states that the manufacturer importation and distribution of infant feeding bottles and sippy cups containing BPA shall not be allowed. Further, the department provides the following recommendations to the chair and the committee for consideration to the measure. So include BPA analogs per and poly polyfluoroalkyl compounds and other chemicals of concern, which are also commonly found in paper and plastic food packaging, and is linked to developmental and behavioral outcomes in children with early life exposure, 
support research activities regarding the matter, mandate the labeling of uh, and disclosure of these chemicals used in childcare articles. And we also wish to inform that a more comprehensive issuance is currently under review by the FDA Center for Food Regulation and Research with regards to food contact materials, which shall include not only BPA, but also other chemicals of concern. We laud the efforts of the Senate for taking a proactive stance on this issue to ensure that actions are initiated, developed, and sustained in order to promote children's health. That is all, Your Honor. Thank you very much for allowing us to read our position paper. So the suggestion is to expand the coverage of subject matter you know, with the same with the same objective. Gawin natin. Okay. Po yun, ano? yes, Thank you for order. that, uh, Direct, uh, uh, Rivera. Any other comments from consumer group? Uh, the I. Hello? No, wala yata ako. Hello, am I still online? Yes, sir, ma'am. We, we can hear you, po. Huh? Yes, po. Uh, am I online? Am I online? Yes. Come yes, sec. sir, we can hear you. Yes, sir. Okay, so... Okay, FDA is the is the authority here no? on what is on on what is uh, dangerous substance, especially for babies and children. Okay, uh, any other comments, Olana? Okay, so do we need? Do we need a technical work? Ah, yes, yes, because of the suggestion of the FDA. Yes. Okay, we will we will call for a technical working group to accommodate the points raised by the FDA. Uh, sayang naman if we limit daw ourselves to just the BPA. Meron daw, tama ba yung term? BPA analogs, ma? Is that the term that you use? I see. We will include all of this. Tapos all of this, ano pa, o, 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 as far as science can uh, determine what are those uh, chemicals still in the market, still uh, found in uh, products accessible to children and babies here in the Philippines, which have been found by science to be detrimental to their health, even to, even to not only short term uh, period, but even uh, in the long term. And uh, let's try to cover them in the said bill. Para one, ano na lang, one action na lang, one action. Okay, so you, the, comms, the ComSec will now uh, call for a, a TWG on this uh, on the BPA bill of Senator Binay. Please inform the good senator of what we intend to do. Okay, we move on. Uh, last Our last uh, the topic for today, two Senate bills. 1916 and 1954 on Trans Fat Free Philippines Act. Okay, who can, uh, who, who did we invite? Uh, Comsec? Sir, Madam, it's you, sir. Uh, from the DOH. Let's start, let's start with the DOH, Muna, to tell us the science uh, behind this. Oh. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. See you. Uh, this is Roddy Carza of the DOH Health Promotion Bureau. Yes, sir. Go uh, ahead, Mr. Carza. Thank you, sir. Uh, the DOH supports Senate Bill numbers on 1916 and 1954, which is seek to prohibit the manufacturing, importation, distribution, and sale of partially hydrogenated oils, oils and fats with trans fatty acid content, or TFA, which has no known health benefits. These measures seek to promote health food choices healthy food choices and lifestyle among Filipinos to protect them from the adverse impact of TFA. TFA. In a report by the WHO in 2019, non-communicable diseases such as cardiovascular diseases 
are one of the world's leading causes of deaths. And in the Philippines, NCDs account for 68% of all deaths and the probability of dying between ages of uh, between ages 30 and 70 years uh, from one of the four main NCDs is 29%. The increasing risk of heart attack and deaths from heart diseases is also associated with the increased consumption of trans fat. However, these uh, diseases and deaths can be prevented and reduced through various interventions including limiting uh, trans fat consumption to less than 1% of our total energy intake, which translates uh, to less than 2.2 grams per day for a 2,000 calorie diet. In view of this, uh, the, DPO, the DOH supports the passage of these measures into law and the elimination of industrially produced TFA from food will help prevent the risk of coronary heart disease, which in turn would help reduce the cases of premature deaths caused by NCDs. The DOH uh, would also like to recommend for consideration of the committee uh, removing the phrase uh, excluding TFA content from ruminant, ruminant sources of Section 10 prohibition on the manufacture, importation, distribution, and sale of PHOs and oils and fats with high TFA content, item C. TFA, whether from artificial or ruminant sources, should not exceed by 2 grams per 100 grams of fats and oil. Uh, that's, that's it, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Carza. Uh, anybody else? Meron bang contrary opinion? Ah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. Madrigal? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair. I'm the administrator of the Philippine Coconut Authority. Uh, if I may be able to read our position paper. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, we would like to uh, express our full support to our uh, legislators for its effort to regulate a healthy food chain supply, especially at this time of pandemic. And as such, the authority deems it uh, timely that with this proposed legislation, coconut oil as a healthy alternative plant-based oil be emphasized and be given due recognition. And uh, with this, we would like to manifest our serious concern since there seems to be an erroneous enumeration of healthy alternative oils when the bill states that the same consists of those with low levels of saturated fatty acids. Uh, this provision is found in Senate Bills 1916 and uh, 1954. Uh, based on studies made uh, by our uh, lead scientist, Dr. Toby Dairit, I think uh, he is also uh, logged in. Uh, we respectfully recommend for our honorable legislators to consider removing the phrase with low levels of saturated fatty acids or the presence of saturated fatty acids does not equate to the presence of trans fatty acids since these are two distinct types of fatty acids. Let it be emphasized that naturally occurring trans fats are perfectly safe and healthy for humans. And in contrast, industrially produced trans fats through hydrogenation and high heating are the ones which are toxic. The more saturated the oil is, the more heat stable it is and the longer it's, it's shelf life. And, so, and uh, actually we have made a position also and manifested this to the Food and uh, Agriculture Organization uh, through the Department of uh, Agriculture where, during the meeting of the Committee on uh, Commodity Problems and through the International Coconut Com uh, Committee Secretariat uh, where we have placed our concern for them to ensure a balanced and evidence-based health advisories and reporting to ensure that the public of healthy alternatives and for them to know the risks as well as the benefits of uh, consuming products with known SFA. Coconut oil being high in saturated fatty acids, which is 64% of which is medium chain fatty acids, makes it a highly stable oil for to last a long period of time and does not have to go through the process of hydrogenation. Oils which are polyunsaturated must undergo the process of hydrogenation to make it saturated for longer shelf life, which now produces the TFA. Uh, coconut oil is also referred to as the lauric oil since it contains approximately 40 to 50% of lauric acid of the overall fatty acid composition. 
This significant presence of lauric acid plays an important role in making coconut oil chemically unique among other oils. Uh, and um, numerous research studies have demonstrated the beneficial effects of coconut oil, breaking out all the misconceptions that it held for ages due to being a source of saturated fatty acids. Health advisors claim that this sensational food has remarkable functional properties such as hydrocholesterolemic, anti-obesity, anti-hepatosteatotic, antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, including HIV preventive activity and cardioprotective effect. Uh, if you remember, sir, a clinical study was jointly conducted by DOST, PCA, and DOH, and this has shown the benefits of virgin coconut oil in boosting immune system for patients positive for COVID-19 are exhibiting mild to moderate symptoms. And this only proves that coconut oil has a wide array of potentials other than its present market usage, which should encourage further support from future legislation. We also recommend sir, that uh, if it is possible for PCA to be part of the uh, interagency task force, uh, being the part of the National Codex Organization of DA Subcommittee on Fats and Oils. That's all, sir, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Okay. Sir? Thank you, Administrator Madrigal. Yes, who's next? From the Department of Agriculture, po, po under Secretary Gabriel Lavinia. Ah, uh, sige. Okay. The DA USEC, yes. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we sincerely commend the authorship of Senator Binay and Pangilinan of the Senate Bill 1954, an act to protect the Filipino people from the harmful effects of trans fatty acids and other purposes. We value your effort to provide an environment of a healthier food chain supply by prohibiting the manufacture and importation, distribution, and sale of the partially hydrogenated oils and oils, fats, and processed and prepackaged food with high trans fat acid content. This move is timely with the prevalence of the chronic illnesses aggravated by and or attributed to the consumption of the TFA. We view this proposed legislation as an opportunity to formulate a proper definition of a healthy alternative oil that would give due consideration to our coconut oil. Uh, the CNO is a healthy alternative plant-based oil considering its unique uh, characteristic attributed by its medium chain triglyceride content pro proven by the studies as beneficial to health and recent and recent of which is the pioneering Philippine studies on the use of coconut oil against COVID-19 which was uh, lengthily discussed by uh, DAPCA uh, Director Madrigal. Particularly, we would like to comment on the following, on the definition of healthy alternative oil, fats, and oil seeds. We respectfully recommend removing the phrase with low levels of saturated fatty acids in the definition of healthy alternative oils, fats, and oil seeds in the bill. Since the definition in the bill says healthy alternative oil, fats, and oil seeds, says oil fats and oil seeds rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids or monosaccharides fatty acids and with low levels of saturated fatty acids. As per our experts, the presence of the saturated fatty acids does not equate to the presence of the trans fatty acids, which uh, since these are two distinct types of fatty acids. Furthermore, this does not recognize the beneficial properties of the medium chain fatty acids, which is unique to the coconut oil. As such, there is a need to define saturated fatty acids, in particular, its subclassification into short chain, medium chain, and long chain fatty acids, in order to show that there is a highly beneficial medium chain fatty acids or the MCFAs, which are non-fattening and an antimicrobial. As per our experts, we recommend the following definition. Healthy alternative oils, fats, 
and oil seeds, oils and fats rich in saturated monosaturated and medium chain fatty acids are stable to heat. Do not create significant amount of free radicals during heating and contain the least toxins and unnecessary toxic chemicals such as the trans fat. In section five on the interagency TFA task force, we recommend that the Philippine Coconut Authority under the Department of Agriculture be an additional member of the interagency task force. On the oilseed crop diversification, we fully support section eight, which reads, uh, section eight, uh, oilseed crop diversification, the Department of Agriculture shall implement an oil seeds crop diversification program and conduct continuing research and development to support the production of healthy alternative oil seeds in coordination with the Department of Science and Technology. Our department would be pleased to be part of any technical discussion that your committee will hold in the formulation of the bill. We would also be pleased to submit a formal position paper as a Department of Agriculture. Thank you again for your continuing support. That's all, sir. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, who's next? Who's next? We have Imagine Lo Sir? Uh, uh, imagine sir? Lo uh, Let's start uh, with Imagine Senator. Go, uh, go Senator ahead, Imagine Law. Doc, Doc, let's let's uh, give way to Imagine Law first. Uh. Imagine Law Project Manager, Attorney Maan Santo Domingo. Okay, go. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Pimentel. Um, again, we'd like to congratulate uh, Senator Binay as well as um, Senator Pangilina for sponsoring this bill. Um, it's going to save a lot of lives from cardiovascular diseases, which is really the point why all of us are here today. Um, we'd also like to congratulate the Trade Committee for acting swiftly on this matter. Um, I just wanted to uh, respond um, regarding the um, definition of healthy oils, and I wanted to raise that um, this definition was actually introduced by the World Health Organization um, headquarters office. Um, it was part of the Replace Action Package um, to determine um, what type of, or to characterize the type of healthy oil that should be um, uh, used or promoted as a replacement oil. Nonetheless, um, as I see the bill uh, provisions um, show, it, it gives the onus or um, the burden to the government, to the Department of Health, the Department of Science and Technology, as well as, as to the Department of Agriculture to, to conduct research, look into all the evidence um, that's available into what kind of oil should be appropriate. And I think really it's going to be ultimately the decision of our government on what type of healthy oil should be used. So um, as I would um, acknowledge all of these um, uh, concerns about this specific provision, if um, I may suggest if it's going to be um, the most contentious, if at all, there is time, I would, I would think, um, to, to um, determine what the type of healthy oil should be. So this provision can actually be removed from, uh, from the draft bill and taken up um, later on during the implementing rules and regulations, during the crafting of the implementing rules and regulations. Uh, that's it on my end, um, Chairperson Pimenta. Thank you very much. Thank you, Panera. But uh, to defer, to defer something, some decisions, and then trust that the the decision will be made by the agencies in the IRR might even complicate the matter. So, siguro the law should uh, resolve the contentious issues, no? Uh, which we will identify in due time. Eh? Kasi ngayon medyo tinitignan ko pa what, what is the issue? Is it SFA versus TFA, mga ganun -ganun. But maybe Dr. Dairit uh, can uh, <coughs> can help us to get frame yes. frame and understand the, the issues involved. Yes, sir. Um, yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Senator Pimentel. Uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, <coughs> go back. I mean, mention the pinanggit na rin yung WHO uh, replace uh, program. In fact, if you go through it, that replace program is really just promoting polyunsaturated fats and tailored fats. 
if you look, I, I went through the provisions of that, and they really target coconut oil. Now, what are they promoting? They are promoting polyunsaturated fats and um, tailored fats because these are these are basically synthetic, industrially synthetic synthetic, synthetic fats. Now, the um, the campaign against coconut oil is lo is a long-standing campaign. It's been going on since the 1980s. In fact, if you visit the website of the uh, American Soybean Association, in 1987, they launched an anti-coconut campaign, uh, the Tropical Fats War, wherein they explicitly said that it was really just to um, get market share. Now, um, so this is a uh, long-standing uh, economic campaign. And uh, they see, in fact, coconut oil is a unique oil. We used to export coconut oil to the US. And then when it got stopped during World War II, that's when they develop um, hydrogenation of um, polyunsaturated fats. So there's a uh, anti-coconut campaign uh, in the US. Now, um, maybe just to, um, since uh, this is not supposed to be a long lecture, maybe I'll just mention that um, before the, um, in the uh, Western Pacific, in fact, there's a WHO book uh, in 2003, where um, it's known that in the Western Pacific, they used to take mostly coconut oil. And this is before the Western fats came in uh, because all they have are coconut trees. And so in fact, they have they, they eat pigs, chicken, and coconut oil. And their um, uh, um, obesity and heart disease was low. And it increased when they started importing the Western oils. So what would happen is if they... Um, and, and I think their plan is to, um, you know, uh, kick out uh, coconut oil. Then we're just going to be consuming polyunsaturated fats and Western oils. And I believe this is going to be a um, bad for our health in the end. But um, there's a you know, longer technical story to this. So I, I just basically um, support the um, position of the uh, Department of Agriculture and the PCA to um, remove the um, the um, prohibition against saturated fats. Because in fact, when they hydrogenated polyunsaturated fats, they really wanted to make saturated fats, but uh, they don't want coconut oil. So um, that's all I'd like to share for now. Um, so thank you, Senator Pimentel. Dr. Dairit, are you connected with the government? No, no, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm with Ateneo de Manila University, and I'm also an academician of the National Academy of Science and Technology. I'm I'm a chemist by training, by the way. No. Uh, that is, what is that NAST? Uh, uh, does that make you does that make you a, a government employee or hindi? Uh, hindi, hindi. Uh, it's a academy. So we are nominated. Um, the NAST was was founded by um, presidential decree in I think 1977. Um, yes. So the the members are not necessarily governed employees, although there are many scientists from government there, but also from the private sector. Are you consultant to the PCA? Uh, yes, I, well, I work very closely with the PCA. Oh, because the director, uh, the admin quoted you, eh, so... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, in fact, we, we have been in touch. Uh, you may have done work for them. Yes, um, yes, I have. Okay, okay. Uh, so, how about this? Uh, the, we have the Society of uh, Nutritionists and Dietitians, so... What, uh, any inputs on the issue? Sino sa inyo? Thank you very much, uh, Senator Pimentel and members of the committee. Yes po, um, this will be very quick lang po, no? Um, PSND would like to show its support na lang in the immediate passing of trans fat elimination bill as it recognizes how trans fatty acids can strongly increase the risk of non-communicable diseases, more importantly, cardiovascular disease in the Filipinos. Coco, uh, Senator Coco, um, in fact, in the Philippines, one out of two already is hypercholesterolemic, and we see that um, uh, TFA consumption is tightly correlated with high cholesterol, which is plaguing our nation. Uh, the current statistic is one out of two. Currently, our diets are very vulnerable to be plagued with trans fat sources. So if you look at the commonly consumed foods in our country, these are infant formula, milk, coffee creamers, biscuits, baked products, beverages, all of them can be sources of TFAs. So with that increased amount of magnitude of intake, there should uh, this can correlate to an increase also in the risk of acquiring heart diseases. Um, we mentioned kanina da, um, looking for terrorists, not terrorists in marking up medicines. 
in my opinion, this is a terrorist hiding in our um, um, grocery items, no? Because this this can kill so much by increasing your risk of acquiring heart disease. Um, with regards to its effectivity, trans fat elimination is very successful in reducing risks in mortality rates or secondary to cardiovascular diseases, which imagine Law and PSND can share with you. And with this in mind, we also want to uh, show, reiterate the fact that um, um, with regards to defining what is TFA, PSND stands by the definition sets uh, by the World Health Organizations, although it acknowledges that, that in the Philippines, coconut oils are um, uh, or are sources of uh, energy in our diets. No? Uh, with this in mind, PSND supports the trans fat elimination bills, um, namely 1916 and 1954. Thank you very much, Senator Coco Pimentel. Thank you, Jake, and to your uh, organization. Anybody else? Good afternoon, sir. Mr. Us, yes. yes. Yes, I am a colleague of Jake from the Philippine Society of Nutritionist Dietitians. Yes, yes. Yes, Paul. Let me just add uh, an important point. No, not that we're not just addressing CVD here or the leading cause of death. We are actually targeting all non-communicable diseases because all non-communicable diseases boil down to inflammation as the root cause and trans fats as artificial fats industrial industrially manufactured fats are very inflammatory inducing mga um uh, negative reactions in the body that are not seen by the naked eye until such a time na makita na lang natin ang clinical manifestations such as heart disease and cancer so i believe we believe that um, eliminating, eliminating trans fat from our food supply is really very important in addressing these health consequences as well as the economic consequences that are related to these disease conditions. And I believe, we believe from PPSND that this is possible with the support especially of our policymakers. Thank you very much. Ma'am, uh, naputol, naputol lang yung ano mo, audio, audio feed mo sa akin. No? Yung non-communicable non -communicable disease, the root cause is, ano sabi mo? These all uh, diseases boil down to inflammation, sir. Just like COVID. Ano po, ang COVID right now is really a problem. Ano po? And as we all know, these two conditions are called twin epidemics, sir. Sila ay magkakambal because kapag tiningnan at the cell and molecular level, the root cause is inflammation that okay. lead to reduced immunity. And as what we can see, no po, those who are susceptible to um, COVID infection, as well as those who are into who can develop the um, severe outcomes, are the ones who have non-communicable diseases such as heart disease, no po? So such as heart diseases. Kaya addressing this, ano po, this uh, food, the elimination no po, of this. Trans fat from our food supply chain will help address these two conditions, these twin epidemics, the infectious disease like COVID, which is now our problem. Also, yung mga non-communicable diseases such as heart diseases and cancer that are the leading causes of death in our country. So, okay, uh, 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 the, theory, the theory is trans fatty acids cause the inflammation? Yes, is that, sir. Is that the yes, theory? Sir. Okay, okay. Sir, okay. Proven by science. Okay. Okay. Proven by okay. Proven by science. Nobody, I think, uh, disputes that. Now the issue is, the bill identifies coconut oil as a trans fatty acid. Is that the issue, uh, Doctor Derek? Can you can you guide me? What is, what is the scientific issue here? Uh, well, I, I, the scientific issue is really trans fats. Now they're throwing in saturated fat, which is really not part of the problem. Hindi ho problema ang saturated okay, okay. fat. Saturated. Okay. Trans fat, uh, trans fat acid, no problem. Walang problem. No problem. Okay. Uh -huh. But the, the, the definition includes saturated fat. Opo. Hindi ho pa sam. Hindi ho pareho ang... Di, hindi pareho. Okay. Hindi ho pareho yan. S SFA is not TFA. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Where okay, does... Where does where does coconut oil fall? Coconut oil is a saturated fatty acid. It's a medium oh. chain saturated fatty acid. 
Okay, so where is it in the law that uh, SFA is considered that TFA? Sandali ah. May nakabanggit ho dyan na dinadali ho ang saturated fat sa ano. Which is actually the same as the, ano, as uh, the Imagine Law, ano, colleague said. Kasama yan sa WHO recommendation, which is um, really not correct. So, uh, naka-comoflage, nakatago. Because the, the, uh, the, the announced objective of the law is to wage a battle against TFA. Yes. TFA, transpate. Pati sa, Opa, pati sa, pub, sa, policy, sa policy statement, transpate. Eh. So, pagdating sa policy statement na ganyan, wala tayong problema. Wala akong problema. Uh, ang gusto mo bang sabihin, eh, nakatago sa terms of the bill na pati si SFA ay, ay tatamaan? Is that... Is that, is that Tama what, what What part of the law, sir? What part of... Uh, si, uh, doctor uh, or administrator? Uh, what part yes. of the law? Sir, uh, there was an uh, enumeration of healthy alternative oils. Uh, that's a definition of terms. Uh, letter yes. E. Uh, letter yes, E. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. That specifies that only th those healthy alternative oils are those with low level of saturated fatty acids. Mm -hmm. And coconut oil has a high level of saturated fatty acids, sir. Okay. High level of uh, saturated. Ay, pakinote na lang natin yun. Okay. Okay, so okay, so that means that because of the definition of the healthy alternative oil, uh, in effect, the law is saying that coconut oil is not a healthy yes, alternative. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. But, yes, sir. But, it, but it is not. Uh, hindi lang siya hindi lang siya endorsed as a healthy alternative, but it is, it is not being prohibited because it is not a TFA. Yes, sir. It's not TFA, sir. Uh, but it says, yes, sir. Pag binanggit kasi sir na ang healthy lamang ay those with low level of SFA, hindi po para pong sinasabi natin na hindi healthy yung may high level of SFA which is coconut. Ah, okay. Oh, uh, eh, oh yes, doctor. And then I'll get a contrary opinion ako meron man. Ha? Oh, sige, doctor Dairit. Unmute, sir. Unmute, doctor. Ang ang mati ang ibig sabihin niyan, ang matitira na lang ho na veg, na oil na pwedeng natin i-consume ay polyunsaturated oils. And these are the soybean oil, corn oil, yung mga pati canola oil. It's really a measure of slipping under the rock. I mean, slipping in na wag mag-saturated fat. Although the objective of doing trans of, of hydrogenation in the very beginning was to make saturated fat. So in fact, these uh, companies are kumbaga, hypocritical. They wanted to make saturated fat in the beginning. Ang problema, hindi na magawa yung saturated fat, nasama yung trans fat. So ngayon, pinapagbawalan ng trans fat, ayaw nilang ano, ma mag-survive ang coconut oil. So all they want is polyunsaturated fat, which is precisely what is in the World Health Organization. Um, replace program, and I'm afraid the world the, the world health organization has been taken over by American, uh, no, the, the American oil industry. Uh, sad to say. Okay, doc, doc, and ito na lang ito ko para maklaro ha? <laughs> para maklaro. Okay, I love studying science anyway. <laughs> Co coconut oil is not. TFA. Tama pa. Tama ba yun? Tama ba yun? Is that a factual yun. statement? Yes. Is, naputol, okay. is that a factual statement? Yes, okay. that, you are correct. The bill, okay, the bill is about uh, removing industrially produced TFA from our food supply. So, it's correct. dapat hindi tamaan ang coconut oil. Kasi nasa sa subject matter eh. Tama po yon. Okay. So, tama po yon. Now, now you, ganito na lang gawin natin. PCA, DA, and Dr. Dainrit. Point, point out to us the danger in the language of the bills which, which you believe can, can now expand the implementation of the, of the bill when it becomes law to affect 
a non-TFA like coconut oil. So, yun po alisin natin. So, that the bill, the bill will be, uh, anong tawag mo dun? The bill will be loyal to its declared purpose na trans fatty acid ang, ang kalaban natin. So, yun pong gawin natin. Uh, unless the unless the dietitians uh, and the uh, the lawyer imagine law has a different or the scientists have different uh, position na uh, maybe somebody will tell us that coconut oil is TFA. Meron ba nagsasabi noon? Wala po. Is there anybody claiming that coconut oil is TFA? Wala. Ah. Uh, so chairperson what, what is the issue? Is that si Dr. Si Attorney Panyara. Oh, yes. Okay. Salamat po. Um, just to clarify, um, Senator Pimentel, I think you really uh, got the gist of the issue. Well, I think clarified po tayo lahat that um, coconut oil is not trans fat. So it's not being prohibited by the bill. It's not being regulated by the bill. Uh, the definition of healthy oil as being low in saturated fatty acids should be read as uh, together with the provision na kung saan kailangan yung healthy oil. And it's with regard to replacement. So, when replacing partially hydrogenated oils, which is yun yung trans fat natin, um, what is recommended under the World Health Organization Replace Action Package is a kind of oil that is richer in unsaturated fatty acids and lower in saturated fatty acids. Um, so, hindi lang po, hindi po niya pinagbabawal ang coconut oil. I don't think um, uh, it it will not in any way prohibit the use of coconut oil. It's only that in replacing um, oil with TFA, and um, it, it, it's not the promoted, it's not the promoted alternative. Um, on this note also, I wanted to flag and I wanted to raise that um, PHOs or partially hydrogenated oils, yung atin pong trans fat oil, is a very small market. Um, there's a market study that says that it's just um, 2.5% of total oil production and about 4.5% of total edible oil. Sobrang liit po niya. Um, kasi uh, precisely it's on its way out already and um, it's going to be, it's already going, uh, it's already parang, um, the, the global movement to, to eliminate trans fat is already underway. So um, uh, I, I don't think that by, rep, uh, by replacing it with um, how healthy oil is defined, it will really impact or affect or put down the coconut oil industry. And that is, uh, I think, the least uh, that, that uh, the sponsors would like to do. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, okay. That, and that yeah. is what we guard against, diba, right, Panyera? That, that is what we guard against. Uh, yeah. Dr. Uh, Senator uh, uh, Actually, the, you have three choices of types of oils. You have saturated fats. Ito yung mga non-trans fat, no? Saturated fats, monounsaturated fats, and polyunsaturated fats. As a matter of fact, what they want to do, and if you read the replace bill, they are promoting polyunsaturated fats and tailored fats. Now, these are the fats that are made by the Western oil industry. So it's actually a way of slipping in the market so that the market, <laughs> they will just get the market but pa din yata nong ano our imagine do yun ang binabanggit dito sa WHO it's really to to uh, um, discourage uh, coconut oil and what they are promoting are polyunsaturated fats and tailored fats both of which are their products so that is why I'm against any mention of any discouragement um, against coconut oil. I think we should just deal with the trans fats and um, I, know, I think we can just debate the other parts of it. Uh, we should not I know, discourage the consumption of coconut oil. Tama yun, Doc. Uh, if it is a war against uh, TFA, let it be a war against TFA. Hindi na siya promo for some other, some other kind of uh, fatty acid. Pero, Doc, in your professional opinion, Polyunsaturated fatty acid and monounsaturated fatty acid are these dangerous also? No, but no. you have to take them in, a, in the right amount. In okay. fact, if you look at the American diet, it's about ninety percent polyunsaturated. Kasi la mataba, totoo lang. So what we really need, what we really need, is a balanced diet. Balance. 
So hindi ko sinasabi na masama sila. Pero kung if 90% of your fats are pollen saturated, ay talagang magiging gasing taba ka ng mga Amerikano. So but so not not per se as bad or dangerous as the TFA that we are yes. fighting against. Tama okay. Tama. I get it. I get it. Uh, Mr. Panera, you're raising your hand. Ano pa? Oh, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Hey, I just wanted to um raise also that and I think the Department of Agriculture is also here. Um during the deliberations um in the House Committee level, in the House Health Committee, the Department of Agriculture actually um, raised that we have a lot of um, available alternative healthy oils here. Um, and they mentioned that we also have a rich soybean um, oil market and also a peanut oil market. I just wanted to, but it's not my place to say that, of course, um, and I'm turning over if if um, Yusek Lavinia is also here present. Okay, anybody else on the science? <laughs> yes, uh, DOH, as you know, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, identify yourself, the uh, okay. DOH. Okay, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Rosemary Hollandes from the Department of Health. Um, the Department of Health supports uh, coconut oil as a healthy alternative oil no, for CFA. Um, Although coconut oil is rich in saturated fatty acid, where uh, two-thirds of the saturated fat in coconut oil consists of medium-chain triglycerides, which are easily absorbed and digested. They go directly to the portal uh, circulation and to the liver, where they are immediately converted to energy for use by the body. In other words, most of the saturated fat in coconut oil is easily digestible and converted into quick energy. In effect, they are less likely to cause obesity because they are immediately used by the body and have no opportunity to be stored. They do not have a negative effect on cholesterol and help to protect against heart disease. Medium chain fatty acids help to lower the risk of both osteoporosis and heart disease. It is primarily due to MCFA in coconut oil that makes it so special and so beneficial. Thank you. Yes, Administrator Madrigal. Yes, sir. Uh, that's why, sir, I, I believe, sir, in the definition of uh, healthy alternative oils, siguro, sir, maganda may expound lang na although coconut is high in SFA, hindi naman po yung mga ibang uh, sinasabing karakter niya. That's, uh, that distincts, uh, makes it dis, uh, distinct from other oils. Salamat po. Uh, yung mga nutritionists natin and dietitians, okay lang, okay lang that there is no outright discouragement of the use of coconut oil. Okay ba yun? Even kayo, when you advise your, your patients, you you do not outright uh, prohibit them from consuming coconut oil in any manner. Hello, um, sir. Uh, okay, po, Dr. Lizelle, kay po muna. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Jake. As a nutrition scientist, sir, we actually support our coconut industry, no po, given the health benefits of uh, coconut oil. Kasi totoo po yung na-mention ni ma'am that uh, coconut oil is very rich in medium chain triglycerides. It is easily utilized, a source of energy. It has no cholesterol. And so we can suggest that coconut oil can be uh, one of the best alternatives. Okay, po, dito sa saturated fat. So hindi po natin sinasabi that uh, coconut oil, although siya, ay, sinasabi po natin that coconut oil, even though it is classified as saturated fats in terms of its chemical structure, ano po, is not, not good for health. No po? Actually, hindi po natin sinasabi yon. And actually, uh, it's high time that we support to our, ano po, um, our very own coconut. Ayan. So, yun po yung stand namin dyan as a nutritionist. At sinasabi din po ng natin na ang dami naman pong alternative sa trans fat. Pero ang focus po natin is trans fat as a industrially produced. It is an artificial fat. It is, it is, it, it is uh, inflammatory. It is dangerous to our health. It doubles our, our risk of developing 
uh, mga inflammatory diseases such as heart diseases, cancer, it has to really be eliminated from our food supply. So, yun po. Okay. So, looks like, looks like uh, the, the disagreement is more imagined than real. Eh. <laughs> Mukhang okay naman eh. Uh, any other inputs? Kung wala na, allow me to summarize it. Tignan natin the, the, the way forward. Any other inputs? Wala na. Okay, ganito. At attorney, ito, Rivera, no? You correct me if I'm wrong, ha? Okay. T TFA is on its way out. Tama ba? Is that what I got from your inputs? Okay. Ne nevertheless, let us, let us deliver the final blow against the TFA by enacting this bill into law. Okay. But let us remain focused on the main objective of the law, which is the fight against TFA. Hence, we eliminate any language in the law which can be used as a mandate or directive in discouraging the use of coconut oil or any other oil. Kasi nga, that's not the purpose. The, 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 law, the law is there not to promote alternative oil but to focus on TFA and get rid of this once and for all. Okay ba yung approach na yun with the PCA and the Dr. Dairit and the, and the rest of our dietitians? Ba okay. Kung okay yun, I will, I will approach the authors. If okay sa kanila, then we proceed. So we will have now, we will have a bill uh, we will propose a bill which the, the yun lang, one ano na siya one focus lang siya the elimination of TFA uh, in our uh, food supply and uh, other products okay consumed consumed by the Filipino people okay if there is no objection to that approach I, I will approach that to I will explain to the two authors Ano lang naman yun, eh? sa definition of terms lang po yun nakalagay, as a healthy alternative that is not essential to the law. Because, di ba, the law is uh, to combat TFA. Okay, so, okay, if there is no other matter, so, uh, ganito, Comsec and my staff, we explain first to the authors, if they are agreeable, then let's call for the TWG. Okay. Yes. If they are not, if they if they are not agreeable, then we call again for another hearing, and then uh, let's uh, <clears throat> let's hear the science again. Masaya naman eh. Uh, I I enjoyed uh, listening to the science behind it. <laughs> okay, so wala na po, wala na ba? Um, in in case of a dispute in the science, who will who will resolve it, uh, Doctor uh, Doctor David? Should it be the DA, the DOH, or the DOST? Uh, well, I think it. I, I think we should just listen to the presentations, and we can judge the. I uh, know. Um, yeah, we, we bring up the science. So again, just in case. Sa ngayon naman wala. Sa wala ngayon eh. We have we have clarified na there is really no dispute on the science. Eh. <laughs> It's it, it 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 is the TFA that we are against. Mm -hmm. All of us are against. Okay, okay. So with that, thank you very much uh, for your participation. Uh, that is our future steps. So so I think we have tackled uh, enough uh, matters uh, today. So the chair would like to thank all of those who participated in all of the six uh, topics that we tackled uh, during this hearing. So I now I now uh, suspend our hearing because uh, we left two two uh, subject matters unfinished. Eh. So uh, so we suspend our hearing and we thank everybody. Salamat po muli. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good day, everybody. Okay. Thank, thank you. you. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.